Wait, this guy's a pro. Wait, hold on. This is definitely not a pro player. Like, you can just tell right away. That's E. Bro. OG Fortnite, right? We have Pleasant Park. We have the Gold Spaz, the Hunting Rifle. So we have a player on the high ground, the one v one situation in OG. His movement looks a little choppy and like weird. It's just like the, he's just like stiff on Nelson keyboard. Goes for a trick shot and just hits a trick shot. This is definitely not a pro player. I mean, I'll be honest, like I don't even need to watch, watch that whole first clip. I mean, that guy was just, he was struggling to crank 90s. Like he could barely build. It was just, he was too choppy to be a pro. Yeah, this is definitely not a pro. No way. I'm gonna say not a pro on this one. Oh, so it's no Takata. So. so he no used way. to be a pro, yeah. but now he's a caster. No that was right, that was right. It's not a pro, it's Takata, this is a caster. Oh yeah, that's not a pro. Yeah, Takata. I'm thinking off the bat, not a pro player because I would be um, trying to take a little angle on this, a right hand peek. He has great peace, his edits are fast. He's waiting to rotate, making sure this guy behind him isn't gonna mess with his rotate anymore. Looks back for some free shots, gets a little beam on him. And like, I'm trying to look for hints, like looking at the gun wrap, like the pickaxe, maybe I can, I can see it's a player that I know. Obvious, obvious pro player. I mean, that's definitely a pro. They're taking great angles. They're really cautious of that bush at the very beginning. We're going to go pro on this one. He's playing extremely aggressive, really good mechanics. I'm going to go pro. Pro, I was right, obviously. Two for two. Come on. Yep, epic well. Just, it's just, you just tell. So we got epic well, 6x FNCS winner. It's epic whale? Wait, Epic's crazy. Get around, grappling. He has a skin on that I recognize a pro player would, would use. You guys gotta show up, show off the global champ a bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's 100% a pro player. They're applying pressure really well. They're chasing the opponent. They're like not letting him breathe at all. They're leading with a lot of peace. Like that's a great fighter right there. He's not taking any bad angles. He's not over committing and jumping in the box just in case. I'm going to say pro here. This is definitely a pro. He's moving really fast, so I do think it's a pro. That has to be Cooper. That has to be Cooper. That can't be anybody else. That's E. Bro. Okay, why is he observating Snooty Steps wearing Cooper's skin moving like that crazy? Diamzo. It is Yamzo, one of my org, uh, org mates. Diamzo. Okay, so I was right. It's a pro. Yeah, I thought it was Cooper. I mean, yeah, I feel like it is really easy. I feel like pro players are just way more like meticulous about what they do. They think through really quickly. Like everything they do has a reason and they just have like really fluid movements. The Global Championship for me was the most exciting one. I had a blast going to Copenhagen, right? Playing on stage during the Global Championship, it was really, really fun. Walking out behind stage in front of a big arena, it's like a good feeling, you know, because you're like, oh wow, I qualified for this, I made it here. The arena's nice, like especially seeing everything just light up after a game or like when someone wins. I just love everything about it. It was really fun. You get to meet everybody also, which is another great part. Great city, great everything. Playing at a land that big was so cool, especially walking out to crowd cheering for you. It's just, it's a different type of feeling. I think the coolest highlight for me at the Global Championship was seeing Dukes one versus two. 
against Sent and Polarized. Now it's Duke left in a solo clutch situation. Two of NA's finest directly above him. What? Massive shot though onto Sent. Duke with the back to back, and it's a victory royale out of nowhere. Me and Sented and Dukes and Edgy weren't doing good. And we like, both needed a good game to kind of secure ourselves in ball for like the finals. Dukes, like, he's my roommate. Edgy, we're all best friends. Like, as soon as we saw each other's names, we kind of just like got up and just like started like going crazy. I can just remember myself, you know, cheering right after it happened because all my friends made it to first and second and both of them qualified. Even though we lost the game, like, we got 1v2 by him. It was definitely, it was a good time. For me, the highlight obviously was winning the first upper bracket. This is looking like Acorn and Colt's game for the taking. And Acorn's doing an excellent job. Pressure with a breach of shotgun, making sure no one's got a chance to breathe. NA takes the game. Acorn and Colt, the shrug. What's it like, Cole, taking your victory royale on day one here in Copenhagen? This guy's just, I don't know, this guy's on something else. I felt like I was like on top of the world. Nothing could stop us or win this whole tournament. I mean, for me personally, winning a game, it just gave me such a boost of confidence. A 2v2 situation, Speaks and Poyo drop them into the palm of their hands, but a nice shot's gonna be traded off, but a down onto Thomas, and they take the game, NA on top, thanks to Poyo and Sphinx. I kind of felt like I was on top of the world and I could do anything. Seeing Miro lift up that trophy definitely gave me a lot of motivation to grind harder and, you know, play for that. Watching them lift the trophy definitely made me feel like, oh, I gotta make sure that's me next time, you know? Stand on the stage and hold the trophy at the end, and that's like the main thing that I envision myself doing that keeps me wanting to make sure that I qualify for this year as well. Oh, I want to be at Global Championships really bad. One of the biggest priorities in my life right now. Even if somehow I don't qualify, I will be there. The experience last time was too good to not. It's not an option for me not to go to the next FNCS Globals. I already know I'm gonna be there. If I don't qualify, I might have to just retire. I'm due for the qualification this time. I'm making sure that this year's my year. I'll see you guys there. What's going on, Fortnite fam? Welcome back to the FNCS. Day two of the grand finals for North America is about to kick off six games, and then we will have ourselves champions who will take hold of the acts of champions, but not only that, will be the first duo from NA to qualify for the FNCS Global Championships later this year. Much at stake. Let's bring in Kelly. Let's bring in Vivid because there's a couple things we want to talk about. Not only is day two uh, kind of a boon for some duos, right? Day two, they like to heat, kick things up, heat up, but the twist, 1.5 times points for the day. Uh, we've never seen anything like this before, Vivid. I'm excited to see how this will all unfold. I cannot believe that we've gone through qualifiers, semifinals over the course of weeks. And we have been talking about grand finals, players making it here to be able to compete. And not only is day number one of the competition complete, we are kicking it off with day number two. Kelly, six games is what separates us and an FNCS champion. I cannot wait. I cannot wait either. And after watching EU just a few hours ago, we can see just how close this competition can be. Literally a single point separating uh -oh. first from second place again. I can't believe that's happened twice now. Also seeing these teams that were in like 30th place jump up all the way to fourth. I just cannot wait to see what happens over these next six games. 
yeah much will be decided much will happen and uh, i'm looking forward to it just like we hope you guys at home are as well so what kind of led us to this moment well i mean it it was a lot okay like vivid said weeks and then yesterday the first six games kind of set the stage for us uh talk to me about some of the duos you guys are kind of like excited to see today if i was to call out a duo right off the top of my head it'd probably be muzz and paper yeah, and the reason why we want to go ahead and call out this though here is because they were off to a hot start yesterday. They were actually in first place through the first three games, but unfortunately the back half of the day did not go so well for them, right? And that can kind of be mentally draining. So I myself wanted to take it upon me to kind of figure out how Muzz was feeling coming into day number two. So I went over to his good friend, Aussie Antics, who by the way, shout out to him, pillar of the competitive community. And he reaffirmed me that Muzz was feeling comfortable coming in today number two and honestly Kelly I think they should be yeah I mean considering the fact that they got 10th place while being triple conned at fencing fields against the likes of Acorn and Cold it showcases that they're still even when they did have kind of a lesser performance in the second half of the days yeah. they are still able to pull out games that I don't think a lot of other people would have expected in their certain circumstances and a lot of that is their ability to handle these end games yeah, I mean, they came out swinging in day number one. They won the first game. I want to go ahead and break down how they actually won that. Some very key decision making coming out of the experienced competitors of Paper and Muzz. So once again, this is game number one. Now in this game throughout the moving zones, fortunately enough for Paper and Muzz, the zone, the moving zone actually ended up bouncing back through some of their you know, already placed builds. And they, of course, went ahead and used some of these builds. Now, the reason why this was so good for them is because they have all these edits, which means that they can make plays like this. They can get refreshes. But the important thing to note here is that Paper keeps all of those mats to himself, even though Muzz is low on mats. Once he gets that refresh, he starts to look up the higher ground. Now, this is where the information comes in. Paper not only sees that higher ground is only building with one piece of material, right? Cone, there's no floor kind of supporting it. He also sees that instead of building off the pressure here cold and acorn decide to just drop down to the next closest layer in his mind paper's like wow they are out of materials paper just picked up the refresh he has the materials to go ahead and build fight for that fight for it key decision right there was one to go ahead and keep the refresh entirely to himself so that way he could eventually go ahead and make that build fight and then the information gathering just by looking up kelly so smart I mean, the ability of them to observe not just what's happening on their low ground and to the teams in front of them, but also to the teams that are above them and to see what's the best circumstances to put them into a victorious situation. And watching the high ground team, just like you said, Vivid, able to steal it and then able to convert that into this victory royale in game one, definitely set themselves up for success. My only issue, or it's not even an issue, it's a concern that between games two, three, and four, both of them had to solo clutch in these end Ooh, games. Mm, and they yeah. still were able to grab ninth, 10th place, but eventually solo clutching can only get you so far. So obviously we can see what happens when both of them are competing together at the top of their game. I just want to see both of them make it to an end game for today. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look at the standings, right? Because this will give us a good picture of how they ended yesterday. And currently they sit in that number 10 spot. And again, as Kelly kind of pointed out, that was an, a couple of games of being solos, right? Today, they'll hopefully have gone back to the drawing board and look to shore up some of these issues in their play that could propel them up of the leaderboard. Uh, talk to me about some of the duos here in that 6th to 10th place. I mean, we've got a duo like Aviv and Booga. Yeah, 100%. I actually want to go ahead and talk about clicks and Epic Well. And the one thing about this duo is that they have clicks. And after day one yesterday, I tuned in the clicks to stream and he was like, gosh, I wonder how much damage I did. Don't worry, clicks, I got you. Over the course of the six games, he did 6,600 damage. And he was in first place as an individual for damage done. Second place, by the way, was about 2,000 2, damage below him. So clicks, you were right. You did way more damage than anybody else in the lobby yesterday. I should definitely be proud of that. And honestly, all of these teams deserve to be uh, like proud of their performance. And all of them have this opportunity to be able to take the win today, even though they might be 110 points with this new 1.5 times multiplier. They do have an opportunity to take that first place spot against a duo like Iomzo and Rise, who have had an incredible start 
to day one. Only two points ahead of second place, but honestly, after their crazy performances, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they can even have a bigger lead. And it's not just their in-game aggression, but also how smart they've been playing. Like Iamzo shooting blindly here to bait a team nearby with Rice hiding in the bushes, able to get a few shots onto the opponent, which they decided to back off. I think that was a smart play. They were going for the elimination, just going for those storm surge tags. I love the variation that we can see and some of the some of the strategies, right? Clicks is all about carrying a sniper. Yams on Rise getting creative with the baits in the bush. So, so, so smart. But honestly, Yams on Rise, while Storm Surge strategies are very, very important and how consistently they can make it to the end game, their end game domination is second to none as well. Mm, you use the word second there. Well, why don't we talk about the second Ooh. place duo that's <laughs> only two points behind it's your global champions. It's Hooper. It's Miro. This is not where I want to be if I'm Yamsu and Rise, right? To have these guys on my heels, to be only two points behind me. Now, on the other side, if I'm Cooper and Miro, I'm thinking, okay, 1.5 times multiplier. I'm down. That's that's easy. That's an easy recipe to go straight to globals once again. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be too comfortable if I had global champions breathing down my neck for an <laughs> FNCS championship. But honestly, Kelly, I think the most impressive thing about their gameplay yesterday throughout day number one is how well they dealt with their all spawn situation. I mean, whenever they directly contested and took the 2v2, it seemed like they always had an advantage. And even sometimes they were also willing to kind of realize, hey, we don't have an advantage in this fight. Let's just land somewhere else and, you know, make sure we make it to the end game. Yeah, it started with the early game and then even in the end game, they dominated it between games two and five. They placed top five in every single game. They haven't grabbed that victory royale yet, but today might be their day. Yeah, this 1.5 times, we cannot stress it enough. This is going to make the format quite explosive. We already saw EU just completely change everything, right? And now we get to see what NA is going to do. How are they going to adapt to this new point format? Are they going to be more aggressive? Are they going to be more careful? I want to look back at the standings because there's a couple more teams I want to call out that I think could take advantage of this multiplier. Why not go on over to Acorn and Cold? I think a duo that uh, we, I don't want to say are flying under our radar because they're very much uh, pulling off some incredible things here, but they're currently in that top five and they, they could make that jump, right? Because of this multiplier, we could see anyone in this top 10 potentially look to strike even that number one spot. Yeah, I mean, Acorn and Cold also that, you know, their ability to come up with new strategies, Kelly. I mean, this was one of their highlights from day number one for sure. It was so good. We thought that they were going for this early heal off and were very confused, but instead they were allowing the high te the team on the high ground be distracted, wait for their vision to be fully off of behind them. And then once they noticed that they were no longer looking behind them, grappled up, grabbed the elimination. That's and smart. you know, when you're on the high ground team, you typically look in front of you at the blow. And I don't think they were expecting a team to be so far behind to be able to sneak and steal that height away from them. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of people think Acorn and Cold could win the whole thing and even win global championships and that kind of innovativeness right there is why. Yeah, I mean, hey, coming up with new strategies during the grand finals, showing us something new. Shout out to Acorn and Cold. Something that was not new to our eyes, though, was Re and Ritual dominating, finding themselves up in the top five. And honestly, Kelly, we have to pay homage to their strategy based around going to the forecast tower every single game. And they were able to get it every single time as well. What an advantage for them. Yeah, and it's and it's shown towards the end game as well what this knowledge gives to a player and what it can provide for them. They grabbed two victory royales during the day and they I mean we saw them just absolutely dominate in qualifiers one and two, grabbing seven victory royales over the two days, five in one day, which was more than any other duo got between both weeks combined. So the fact that they're able to pull that out in just a week showcases how incredible they are. But then during the semi finals it seemed like they weren't able to find their footing within each day of the semifinals they were able to improve but i think a lot of us expected them to qualify between days one and two and not have to go all the way to day three but yesterday we got to see re and ritual from what we saw in the qualifiers and i hope we get to see more of it today yeah they're gonna really look to push this top end of leaderboard right everyone's thinking the same thing I'm sorry, you said there's an axe of champions on the line. There's spots to the global championships on the line. Of course, we have to fight for that number one spot. Another duo to highlight, Pollo. 
I mean, these guys are absolutely aggressive. They are looking for a moment like this when we suddenly say, hey, there's a new, a new multiplier. Do you want to be more aggressive, Peterbot? What about you, Poyo? They're thinking, hey, we already have the, the sidearms ready to go. Let's do this. Increasing the amount of points you get for an elimination while Peterbot and Poyo are in the lobby. Who decided that was a good idea? Oh my gosh, I'm sure we're going to see some insane swings from this duo. And I think, Kelly, we, we've said it time and time again, definitely the most mechanical duo basically in the entire world. And, you know, to boot as well, another duo that actually was able to pick up two victory royales yesterday. I'm hoping they follow suit. Our top five is so stacked. Yeah, they were being conned at Ship It Station, but I don't think there there's the possibility. I actually think that the team left them during did, day yeah. one because yeah. they do not want to face Peter Von Poyo. I don't think anyone does. They were able to grab a handful of the forecast towers as well. My only concern for them is these kind of mid to late game rotations. But besides that, obviously, Peter Von Poyo, we all know how incredible they are mechanically. I just want to see them make it to the end game a little more. Yeah, there's so much at stake here. Again, Acts of Champions, the Global Championships, and as well, prize money. Let's take a look at the breakdown here for how this will all shake up. At the end of the day, the duo in that number one spot, $140,000. And again, Acts of Champions, which is in itself an incredible trophy and accolade for the players in game and Global Championship spots locked in on the Battle Bus later this year. I want to quickly talk about expectations with this new explosive format we're going to be seeing today. What do you think is, is something we will be seeing? Are duos going to look to be maybe a little bit more aggressive and try and take advantage of those points? Or you think maybe they're thinking oh, we can't give away those points. We have to be more defensive and try and stay along, alive as long as possible. Well, hey, Zeke, whatever their strategy is going to be right there, they're the professionals. We'll go ahead and leave True. it to them. True. I'm expecting to see some some great battles between the teams that are already top five. But Kelly, with this format, as we saw over on EU, I'm expecting to see some big changes. Some teams that are in the bottom half of the leaderboard just flying up, coming into today with a new strategy that proves to be worthy of you know a top 10 or even a top five in some cases. I could definitely expect some comebacks out of these teams, but also there's a lot of teams out here that have proven themselves to be day two teams. Iamzo and Rise, yeah. historically speaking, in chapter four, had a much better performance in day two. And actually with the current meta in uh, major three, I believe of chapter four, they would have actually won if the 1.5 multiplier was there. So Ooh. they're already in first. Let's see if they can keep it going. Well, I am excited to kick off the competition because today, Champions will be crowned. What makes a champion? A champion is someone who ain't afraid of the big stage. A champion is someone who stands tall against any opposition. A champion is someone who can do it not once, not twice, but five times. A champion isn't someone who never fails, but someone who never quits. A champion has an edge. They have ice in their veins. They can't be cracked. A champion is someone who can step away from the battle bus for two years and come back like they never left. Champions innovate. Champions inspire. Champions conquer the world. Again and again and again. Champions can do it when the lights are the brightest and they can come from the shadows when you least expect it. Champions come from far and wide to show you how great they are. A champion's journey begins long before a title is won. But the grand finals is the road all champions must take to reach their destination. This is the place where they make it known. Are you ready? This is where champions are crowned. And we get to pick up right where we left off, coming in hot here for the FNCS Grand Finals Day 2. It'll be, of course, Monster D-Face and the best Taco back on the mic. Taco, are you ready to pick up the pace here again? Look, NDF, after witnessing the greatness that took place in EU earlier today, I have never been more excited, especially when you factor in, just as the analyst has told, our top 10 here today, it's going to be a lot of work to maintain it. We talked a lot about how things worked for players yesterday, what all 
went right. However, we didn't really get to dive. There isn't enough time to dive into the adjustments. What will players do today as we start to come in? Who's going to have the better strategies here? For Baka and Pars, it seems like they're going straight to their trusty drop 50-50 and just go for it. Attack as is Aaron and company. And for game one, Baka Pars a little bit sharper here as they managed to get the eliminations off the drop which is fantastic for the pacing here for baka pars had they not actually been eliminated those two games we'd see them very well also inside that top five which is a scary sight to think about how again contested teams how well contested teams are playing today taco Probably one of my favorite parts about these two-day formats mdf is the fact that after the conclusion of day one Whenever you actually take to socials and you start sifting through the things that everyone is saying and the only message that seemed to be unanimously shared with all of our North America competitors is they just wanted to play here today. The excitement, the amount of tension that really started to develop because it, it's it's like that moment where things sink in. You conclude game number six and then remember you still have a fresh six to work with but the point multiplier is what's really going to, I think, determine the actual pacing here today. And we are seeing some teams trying to make those necessary adjustments, trying not to find themselves Elin too early on, even if they are contested at their drops like Day and Redux. That's right, a win is gonna mean even more, but an early elimination is gonna hurt that much more as well. So pacing is gonna be incredibly important here today. All in all, right now, Day and Redux have a lot of rethinking, recalibrating to do as yesterday was not the performance that they were looking for. And right now, we're seeing a much better day here, ending his battles fast and swift alongside Redux. And this is the type of movement we expected to see from them early on. And so far, so good. So well played for Day and Redux as they pick up a nice set of eliminations. On the other side, Colvin Acorn pressing the gas pedal here as well up against Mason and Enpen. And Mason's down. He's not even going to go for any type of trickery there, but get the full finish instead. Quickly wrapping up the battle. And Enpen's just left running here. And let's not forget, Muzz and Paper are just to the north. So... For a full-on head-to-head clash, this is a little bit uncharacteristic of Cold and Acorn's early drop as far as what we've seen so far. But this is the result of Cold and Acorn. They recognize the fact Mason and Empen, they were actually the first duo to take the Society Medallion here at Fencing Fields. You can see Cold now with that Mythic Striker in his loadout. That's an unfortunate circumstance as well for Enpen because not only does he have to wait until Cold and Acorn are through digging into the vault, taking all the best loot. He's also just going to be super delayed in, in terms of trying to find a, a search strategy now because when you're operating as a solo, you, you can't really afford to try and exchange damage this early on when the only focus you have is just recovering your teammate. And with no eliminations, actually, Taco, what are the chances that they were winning the engagement but the npc got the last, last tag tick. it might have actually happened because <laughs> you did see there was an ai under the ramp and i thought at first that was surely end pen but no it was just an ai i believe they have been essentially bested by the ai for the knock and uh they won't get the elimination credit early on but they still do of course get to reap all the rewards and the benefits of but the engagement either way Six mm. points mm -hmm. farmed by the NPC instead so. of cold. But that is, it, it's still tragic, but that's definitely an elim that Acorn and Cold are likely going to look to try and recover elsewhere. A at the very least, they still managed to get their way into the vault. You see these teams now, Peterbot, Poyo, Reet Ritual, trying to prioritize these forecast towers, making sure to protect them as well just getting set up super early on because you have to anticipate that there's going to be at least one other team that's going to look to challenge some of our duos setting up base around these forecast towers. Yeah, definitely. And Peter Bottom Boy, yeah, I like this little angle that Boyo is holding here, even waiting to put the ramp out. But unfortunately, doesn't get the tags that he is looking for. You can see Peter Bot's positioned likely on the other side of this mountain as well, just trying to hold the outskirts 
of the zone here. So it's not it's not just about getting, of course, the forecast tower, but it is equally important to continue to maintain your surge status here. And this is why they're getting active there on the outskirts. We jump onto the other side of the Yom zone rise, and this is a very interesting situation here as they don't realize that there is a team inside the bush just above rise it's edgy it's tavern we've seen edgy and tavern play incredibly ready yesterday up against acorn and everyone else here at the farms and yep you can see they're right in the same spot more or less but they've been spotted out by another duo and rise should surely get all the information he needs here at this point and not just that, but I believe Yamzo maybe even saw some of the walls that were being placed mm -hmm. by Edgy and Tavern. The bush not able to provide total coverage from that. So Rise is definitely proceeding a little bit more cautiously here. We're trying to collect some mats. At least has max brick. Now just trying to prioritize some of that wood. But for teams to just stay so postured so aware and, and a team like yamzo and rise especially when you factor in this is their fifth fncs grants as a team and the four that they've competed in together already their placements have consistently been within the top 10. it's almost like you can tell that they're just trying to play this one out exactly how they did yesterday because that's what resulted in them finding the first half of this Grants in that first place position leading on the leaderboard today. Well, one team that's not playing at all like they were yesterday's day as he picks up Quanti and Byla, whom, by the way, I'm fairly certain was doing pretty well pacing as far as their, their overall points are going yesterday. So for the 1.5x multiplier day, teams like Dan Redux, Redux already turning online. It's going to show you how impactful it's going to be to their overall scoring for cooper and miro they're in a bit of a standoff but look who's getting even more active it's clicks epic whale who's jumping right into it this thing i feel like a repeat clash up against the wtj duo here at the rebels roost this is one of the teams that clicks and epic have comfortably taken as far as fights have gone yesterday and they do have the overall wins across this duo here but no clicks and epic just like yesterday not interested in sticking around over you know over welcoming uh with their stay here they get a couple tags they don't get the elimination right away they pretty much disengage clicks and epic have certainly had a tendency to kind of stray this way over towards rebels roost Again, knowing that there is usually at least one or two other teams for them to try and find some of that surge tag damage on. But Clix is right there with you, MDF. He recognizes the fact this is not an engagement I, I need to force. And essentially, we'll just back off. Don't know if he was able to really exchange many shots before we tapped into his perspective. But... Check back in later on to see how he's faring right now. Pars, Baka, they just want to confirm their cash, but they've got to deal with the likes of Peterbot and Poyo first. Builds definitely favoring Pars and Baka, though, given that they've already got that cash recovery going. Peterbot trying to do what he can to break into Pars' box, but it's Pars doing an excellent job just keeping him at bay. Baka, on the other hand, needs a little bit too much damage from Poyo, so temporary fall back. It's going to put Pars into the holding wall responsibility here. Another shot exchange. Peterbot Poyo definitely getting some very consistent surge damage online here. Even if they can't recover the cash, they might be able to find these eliminations instead. Poyo gonna apply some good pressure, but finally Baka with the response, pushing Poyo even further back. Peterbot now forced to resync with Poyo. They've got to utilize this Flowberry Fizz as a team. They both want their shields to get a little bit of regen online. But Baka, Pars. That cash definitely helping them as far as trying to establish whether they want to go for a, a further engagement here at Peterbot and Poyo. Peterbot and Poyo are going to answer that for them. They're what an absolutely, I was <laughs> going to say, what an absolutely intense fight between our fifth and seventh place duos going straight head to head. And not only that, no trickery involved. It was a clean, all out box fight. You saw that this is a singular layer high. It wasn't two stories, wasn't anything extra. Just a clean high level fight.
you love to see it well while this is all happening there's plenty of action happening everywhere as well want to keep you completely dialed in take a look at how rise and the Amzo are continuing to find themselves in the mix here Yamzo jumping in you have down bodies of bacon and tk here off to the side other teams fighting south the ruin reels but they don't care the grapple hook is going to allow them to close the distance get their eliminations get the finishes and more importantly set themselves up for success here and yamzo and rise are that sleeper duo to keep an eye out on as they have the most victory royales this weekend so far tk though probably kicking himself for that one not sure what led to the fall in the first place, but the fall damage is going to be what sparked that initial knock. And Yamzo and Rise, they're all for it. I mean, when you get a freebie elimination served up to you like that, MDF, don't know many teams that wouldn't look to try and follow up with even further pressure. Tough start to the day. Bacon and TK as well, just encountering some very unique struggles in their day one competition, but it's the mental fortitude, I think, at this point that could really be the, the ultimate separating factor between the top end of that leaderboard and the bottom half. And Muzz Paper, they're certainly not a team that's going to be content with their current 10th place standing. They want to pack a punch and they want it to start here in game number seven. You can see Muzz, how adamant he's being, constantly scoping their area to see if there is a possibility for them to look for a little bit of follow-up. They can get even one tag online, a shield crack. That's all it takes for teams to feel comfortable with them trying to apply more pressure. Seen it time and time again. But for Pump and Sphinx right now, they have a bit of an issue right now. They've decided to kind of play this edge line. However, they're one of the only teams on the further side of it and they have too many duos positioned inside the ruined wheels with arguably stronger positions here so not too sure if pump and sphinx are gonna actually be able to get as active as they would like and this is a ninth place duo just ahead of muzz and paper it's one of the few chances pump might actually find uh have to find a tag and if he doesn't hit it they'll just be slipping behind but back to pars and baka the the action doesn't stop here as they continue to fight for theirs polarizing death don't want anything to do with this duo i think they might have recognized the skill set behind Bach and par sometimes you could just tell you know this team is dangerous and with how they fended off peter bot earlier just a couple moments ago here at this exact spot i wouldn't be surprised if Bach and pars are playing above average or just about primed right as far as what we can expect from them Baka and Pars are essentially in a never-ending box fight, it feels like, with the lobby. Just every time we look at them, they are constantly being challenged, either for their position or just for that forecast tower, sometimes even the combat cache. But obviously here, leading into the fourth zone, Ritual and Re. We saw how well they were able to establish a positioning in some of those end games with that forecast tower knowledge but focus right now is going to be on clicks and epic whale Hello? whether or not clicks has been able to connect with some early sniper shots as vivid already called out earlier today this man led an individual player damage on day one of grants he's looking to try and do it again spicing things up here between cam and a minish but clicks just dancing back and forth between these wall holds a minish gonna eat some decent tags there Mythic Frenzy just proving to be a little bit better in these kinds of close face circumstances, but Click still trying to be wary. Doesn't want to find himself too split from Epic. He definitely wants to make sure that his duo can help support him in this circumstance. Now I'm starting to wonder if whether or not they're disengages in the early game and picking up different fights with all types of other duos is attributing to the damage that, you know, he was able to lead with compared to other teams yesterday. But this right here, this seems like an all or nothing type situation. And other teams are now starting to look inwards. So this is not the cleanest battle, especially for someone like Clicks and Epic Whale, who have been very strategic with what teams they decide to fight. Most of their 2v2s have been isolated. They've been unaffected by third parties and they've been very deliberately chosen. However, with the pressure of the storm surge here, this one feels just a little bit different. But on that note, Clicks and Epic, even if they have that medallion to exchange, 
and get their shield back up to full for the most part. Uh, Clicks and Epic, they know that they've got at least two teams trying to hold them. Try and use that crash pad to rotate out. Yamzo, on the other hand, now <laughs> Hound Aiden trying to do what they can, but it almost seems as if there's another team taking notice. No, it's actually just that surge damage with the assist there for Iamzo and Rise, but still another big collection piece for Iamzo and Rise. Just more points being added on to the total count. We were just talking about, you know, having to pick a fight with a duo. You want to be strategic. You want to be deliberate. Well, this time, Flix has no idea. This is Peterbot and Boyo. They're pushing here. Could be their worst nightmare. Could be the one duo that potentially slows them down. They do have to be careful here. It's Peterbot and Boyo perform exceptionally well in these types of situations. A very, very tenured box fight 2v2 type team let's see it though they're going all in they kind of have to so clicks is likely making the call here we have to do this and they are putting on the pressure Peter and Boyer recognizing that they don't have to rush into this and they are slowly fighting on the back foot and epic whale gets punished first as Peter Pot counter fires with the SMG it just does so much damage if you hit those headshots and Clicks putting up an incredibly great defense here as Peterbot is hurt, Boyo is hurt, and Clicks successfully defends off in a 2v1 right now and continuing the pressure here, but he's got to save his teammate. And instead, Epic drops the match for Clicks. What is happening right here? So Clicks is actually going to go for this fight here instead of playing for the pickup. It might be a fatal error, but the punishment is so good, and Clicks does it again. Clicks is actually putting in so much oh work right gosh. now. Might have dealt just enough damage. Peterbot, Boyo, they've got to reconsider. This is no longer yes. a battle. They can stay active and Clicks with the revive of the century. Their game one extension that Clicks just managed to buy for himself and Epic Will is massive because Epic should have been Elim by rights there to Boyo and Peterbot had it not been for Clicks. But you can see here, in the replay, Peter Bot, such a sick angle onto Epic. Oh He's so gosh. focused on Poyo, loses track of the line of sight that Peter Bot had while Epic was looking for that right side peak and just really well played. But even better still was Clicks because at the end of the day, he came in for the rescue and it played off. This is, an, this is a, like an absolutely incredible situation to be in for Peter Bot and Boya who have heavy mats. So they'll be able to like bounce back, but they don't have heals. But Cooper and Miro fall to Clicks and Epic Whale, who by the way, had no material. So they make another desperate play to jump in on a team. In fact, we get to watch that back one more time. Take a look at what happens here. They crash pad in, they see Cooper building, they see shots coming in and right into the box. Clicks gets inside and then they push down Miro who was in the bush next door. You just cannot prepare for that untimely demise of a duo landing on you and clicks at epic whale have just completely shut down the momentum of you know arguably some of their biggest competition the global champions i would even wager that clicks and epic whale managed to sabotage Poyo and Peterbot. You can see Poyo trying mm, to get the revive yep. off now onto Peterbot, but they were stuck in that engagement in that box fight with Clicks and Epic for so long and Clicks forcefully expended all of the heals just about from Poyo and Peterbot. Now, look at them. Absolute shambles. 18 builds here for Peterbot. No heals. If they want to get their HP back, it's going to come as a result of winning an engagement with another team. But the odds of doing that from their current position held outside of the zone, knowing that since it's pulling north side, they're going to be stuck in the congestion towards the south. This is going to be a difficult rotate for Peter Bot and Pollo, and they won't have the benefits necessarily of being able to get to front side immediately. It is going to be a grapple blade rotation. Thought for a moment that it might have been Flowberry Fizz into this final crash pad. Peterbot instead, a little bit of trouble, spotted out, but will manage to use this natural cliff face as some slight protection. Still has to make it through the teams above and below him though. What's crazy about all this as well is that Yamzo and Rise just 
literally got all that pressure alleviated off of them. The, the pressure of having Cooper and Miro riding your tail, right? As far as the points are concerned. And for Peterbot and Boyo, I mean, they are in such a desperate situation right now that if they don't jump on a team immediately, they might not have a chance to do so later. So here it is. It's going to be all or nothing. Trashy gets chunked with a huge tag there, but Boyo gets white tagged as well. And if Peterbot can't find this elimination, I'm not sure if he ever will. But the server starts to turn in on Trashy and... I love that he just waits. He says, wait a second. Let the let everyone else do the work. All we have to do is get the material. That is what they need right now is material, not necessarily the eliminations here. They need to stay alive for placement point more importantly, of course. Oh, but look, it's Yams on Rise right below them. This is just not going to get any easier. It's such a familiar position, too, to see Yamzo and Max. Rise trying to control the low ground. They will successfully manage to pick up the loot that they so desperately needed off of that elim but at the same time they still have to keep things moving and it's not like it was an exorbitant amount of mats either peterbot and polio most certainly going on the hunt still to see if they can secure another elimination another refresh because that's what they still need more than anything else and re without ritual as a solo trying to still pose a little bit of a threat here just taking advantage of all the teams rotating ahead of him getting some shots out or surge tag damage but trying to be wary kind of hanging towards that backside of the zone as well still gonna build up for height though which he is needs, he needs tags <laughs> yeah he's going for it i absolutely respect it and look all of our top teams are just in so much trouble cold and acorn now left as a solo once again cold here Looking like a repeat performance of yesterday where Cold was left to try to clutch out an end game by himself. And luckily for him, he does have plenty to work with. While this is all happening, while he lost Acorn in this process, Cold did pick up two late game eliminations. Take a look at how that played out. It's for Tekka with a instant delete here from the flank. That legendary rifle doing so much damage here when it's a you know properly set up and then someone lands in his box oh my gosh wtj's higher gets mounted immediately and look at this taco now we're getting into end game this is where all those places points start to add up there are so many solos running rampant right now cole just another part of the tally count here opens up his cone to find a massive shot onto kanada Kanata, though, wary of the fact that he had a player directly underneath him, will pause for a moment as Cold immediately grappling towards that front left side of zone. Just trying to stay ahead of all the crowd, all the action. Still making sure to look back, though. Get some good damage applied for every zone wars. Crackly oh now finding themselves on the receiving end oh of Cold. Gosh. And Cold, he's not going to let this go anytime soon. That's one elimination already. But it's actually going to be Skater who snipes that one away from Cold. What looked like another confirmed six points is now just going to result in a placement attempt. The way Cold is putting down these players right now, I mean, it is looking like Cold is absolutely primed up right now. He's playing so, so well. And look, even going to go for the smart placement play here just to go ahead and hold it out really allow things to happen in front of him here he's gonna buy himself plenty of time and somehow re is still alive listen up don't forget these are worth 1.5 x placement points and eliminations as well so every single moment and opportunity right now for every team that falls here it is just so much more important reed's movement is incredible as he is parkouring back and forth here editing this weakened structure here just to stay alive and cold too as a solo is holding on the script cannot be written any differently right now all of the teams that needed to have those comeback opportunities have literally been granted this chance to do so as the top have fallen and the other top tens have risen essentially in this moment here and look at cold go down goes tavern the healthiest of the duo and can he get one more? But no, this zone takes him out. But Reed managed to pick up Booga, who was just trying to pickaxe the wall behind him. Still tough to make a run as a solo. Yamzo and Rise, Yamzo that's why they're still hanging out on the low ground. But Chris with a knock there. Yamzo 
feeling pretty oh good gosh. about that one. Still looking to see if he can collect Polarize too. Part of the process, but losing oh guys. God. Solo situation. Yamzo can't hold on any longer. Polarize gets the better end of that exchange. But now, clicks. Epic Whale down for the count. But clicks in a one versus two situation. Can he find it? The Mythic Frenzy just short of getting the shots that he needed. But I'll tell you what, MDF. The team that just won this Victor Royale here to start the day off with game number seven. Those are some massively needed leaderboard points. And it's worth so much more. So this is how the comeback arc begins for some duos. And more importantly, how the race takes off for others. The fact that Yabzo and Rise were still alive in that game, incredible. But the solo performances from Cold, from well, even the likes of Clicks and Epic who came in as a duo to put themselves in the conversation to remain relevant in the tournament, even for death and polarized now, they are very much a contender inside the top five. The points have just gotten so condensed that I'm afraid the leaderboard is going to be looking extremely spooky. It is definitely not going to be the same. Like all I'm going to say is, I saw a tweet from Death, the start of the day here, MDF. He said top five or nothing at all. Maybe it was top 10, but either way, they've got their eyes on the prize. And it's certainly making it to the top of the leaderboard. That 100 points on top of the points accrued from the elimination count, bound to have a very beneficial impact from their current standing. But there's only one way we can find that out for sure, MDF. And it's with Zeke, Vivid, and Kelly on the desk. Oh, this game was crazy. This was the way I wanted to start the day, an all-out chaotic battle. It's just we're hopping from duo to duo, and it's just non-stop action. The solo clutches from Cold, from Clicks, really quick. Death, let's go, brother. <laughs> Victory Royale, as the casters called out, because of this multiplier, these Victory Royales are going to really shake up these standings, Viv. Um, yeah, what what just happened that game? I, I mean, I seriously, know. I have no idea where to begin. I feel like my jaw was just like that the entire game. Yeah. I, I think we have to talk about, I mean, of course, death, polarized, coming out, swinging, game one of day number two. You know, you ever see that meme, right? Where, where the where the little thing's like looking over the snowbank and he's like, what they doing over there? That's like death and polarized, right? <laughs> They're taking away the win and then all this is going on with the solo clutches and clicks. And they're just like on the low ground, picking up their own eliminations as a duo. What what a game, Kelly. Yeah, Death and Polaroids on the low ground, grabbing 10 eliminations, being the third team to grab a double digit elimination game. And bless clicks dropping down here. I think he knew that between it being a 1v2, it just, he had to go for it. He didn't have the heals anymore. And how could you blame him after the most obscene run of a player I have ever seen. Yeah. I cannot even imagine what Clix's stream and chat is like right now. <laughs> going all the way back to the fight with Peterbot and Pollo, to then going to Miro and Cooper, then to have a solo run. Vivid, I, I like. I can't handle this. If this is just game one, I think I might like start crying. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Clix <laughs> literally deserves like some sort of MVP for that performance right there. I mean, Epic Whale's down, like you said, clutching up to fend off Peterbot and Pollo as a duo. I don't even know. They end up on higher ground. Zeke, what's going on? Well, you know what? We can find out. Let's look at these standings. <laughs> this is going to tell us everything we need to know. So coming into that, Death Polarized, we're in 13th place. But look at this. They've jumped up into 4th out of nowhere wow. wow but look at this i think the story has to be yamzo and rise it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing these guys still have this top of the leaderboard but how long can they hold on i don't even uh, i was so distracted during that game i forgot yamzo and rise were even playing i'm not, hey listen shout out to them right holding on to first place coming out of the gate swinging holding on to that top spot on the leaderboard. Kelly, a big thing that we talked about yesterday, the last three FNCSs have been won by the team that's in first place after day number one. Holding on to it after game number one on day number two. I don't know, we could have our winners here after five games. 
I mean, they did such a good job on the low ground. Inevitably, they did go down, especially with a team like Death and Polaroids that were also in the low ground. Eventually, you're going to have that contention with the 2v2. But just so many solo runs we got to see there between Cold, who I don't even understand Insane. how he was able to stay alive. He was at 10 HP at one point and still grabbed an elimination. We saw Reet with no builds and no heals staying alive. Uh, there was just so many of our top duos somehow a solo here we have cold's game going on this is a little bit earlier on but you can see he was a solo from zone eight if not even before yeah he was a solo for a very long time and he just makes it work look how many mats he has right now of course that refresh that he ended up finding and then the second one ends up coming in right here i swear the amount of times i saw him hit like 140 plus damage onto just anybody throughout this end game was incredible i mean he is able to consistently just oh. 1v2 look at this just looking knowing that that's a duo on the other side of that wall and having the composure to continuously hit those headshots i mean i know it's going to be a plan on words and we've said it a million times you know his name's cold ice in the veins he is just so good in those situations it was it was crazy at one point at zone nine when he was a solo he was 1200 above storm <laughs> surge which what? duos have solo? issues with that i can't believe as a solo he was able to do that just crazy this was just game number one yeah i think we have five more games of this I can't do and to it. just tell how different these games are right this multiplier, it's really shaking things up. So many of these duos are put in these situations where they're either shambles or they are shambles and they're thinking, I'm just going all in. I have no other choice. I'm looking at you, Cold. Wow, five more games of this, Vivid. Yeah, I mean, those are the type of, you know, performances we need if you want to make yourselves an FNCS champion. I really feel like a lot of our top 10 teams there were really showing us everything that we had. But, you know, Kelly, coming into day number two here, a lot of those teams being solo, we haven't really seen them as a duo kind of perform yet either. So I'm just, I'm excited to see some of those solo performances be turned into duo performances and they'll perform even better. And if we're going to talk about solo just real quick, it was exciting to see Kanata there. I am a bit confused as to how he had yeah. high ground over clicks and Epic Whale for a moment there. But Kanata and Agers obviously didn't have the performance that they wanted to in day one. But to see him being able to hold that strong in another solo performance is exciting to see. I am locked in and I hope you guys are locked in as well. We have game two ready to go. So let's just jump back into this one more time for game number six. This is insane. This is definitely really starting to turn up right now. And you know what? You have to call a spade a spade. The fact that Epic Whale fell off the high ground, there is just no excuse for losing out on those points when the competition is this close. And now Cooper and Miro have to play catch up, but they're a team that has done this in the past here. So Taco, we have a lot of new developing storylines happening. There's plenty of new developing storylines, but the one thing that has managed to hold true for at least first Mount Lobby is the fact that Yamzo and Rise still maintaining that first place position on the leaderboard. Doesn't matter what everyone else is doing, as the analyst so kindly pointed out, it's all about just focusing on your own game, focusing on where those consistency factors were at, because Yamzo and Rise, they made excellent work of being the third party bandits, essentially, towards a lot of those engagements, a lot of the elimination points they found in this seventh match did come as a result uh, of them just being in the right place at the right time. And also just how how in the world did Cold and Reed do what they did as solos in that lobby? Well, guess what? We get to continue the action here. Let's jump in with game number eight. All right, game eight of the grand finals is just starting to get cooking here. Battles that we know to look out for. Miro, Cooper at the drop. Baka, Pars at their drop. Cold and Acorn. Will the AI put themselves on a leaderboard again? I don't know. Let's find out here as we start to take on to the world. And does look like Baka and Pars have a lot, of course, to think about here. <laughs> Baka, Pars, half the lobby at their drop. Not actually, but still. Getting triple contested is certainly not fun. As usual, though, it's going to be Chance. It's going to be Aaron. Actually, Chance and Aaron lucky. getting tagged up a little bit here. Immediate launch pad away. Baka with that Enforcer AR still managing to collect. He actually gets the not confirmation onto Chance. And with those Shieldfish, Baka, Flowberry in hand as well. Still waiting, though. Doesn't want to challenge it just yet. 
given that Baka and Fars want to make sure they get some essential resources. Just off this first building here at the Reclaim Villa, Sandy Strip area. But it, it definitely some some solid accuracy. Yeah, Baka's him. He hits the tag and just looks away. Like he knew he was gonna hit the tag. <laughs> just looks away. He's like, yeah, I got that. And it's GG. Looking at the standings that they they just gave us a little glimpse. This is looking like a top 10 or nothing at the moment tournament. I'm finding it extremely difficult now as teams that are from 11th and below that they're going to have a chance to get into, you know, the top three because essentially these points are really starting to rack up right now. You're seeing the effects of a 1.5x multiplier essentially here on the day for all of your performances. But look at this, Bach and Pars go from one team directly into the next. They are not happy with the uh, the shots that came in just a moment ago. And they say, you know what? You're a little too close to us. They want to take that fight. But another squad jumps in now. What is happening here? It just doesn't stop for Bach and Pars. Again, I, I said it last match, but it's literally just never ending box fights with these two. They drop in a spot where their intention is to try and contest the forecast tower that's east of the hills from Reclaim Villa. And so, as expected, Baka Pars just having to fend off numerous teams that just insist on challenging these two. Nobody's seemingly convinced that Baka and Pars they might have a lot of respect from players in NA, but that's not respect isn't going to prevent people from trying to take you out in a grand format. Ooh, massive shots. Tag. Beautiful tag. Hey, listen, you know, he's just peppering them, letting them know we're here. All right, you pack off, take a look at Snacky and Possess. Some of these early game eliminations that they get to pick up. One on to Mackwood. And I was going to say, don't tell me He's not gonna get the points now. Now I'm just gonna forever be wary <laughs> of battles that happen on top of the NPCs on the map. Colden Acorn starting off their game much slower than the last one here. Really just feeling out the fencing fields. But like we talked about, the amount of teams that land in this vicinity, you have Muzz and Paper who are trailing behind right now, but they're the team under the scopes right now. And I don't blame Acorn and Cold for taking things so slow there at Fencing Fields. Seems they're a little bit more convinced that it's better to just wait. There's no waiting around though for Cooper and Miro. They want this exchange with Cam and Aminish, and they want it now. If they can find these eliminations quickly, it'll be a lot easier to handle things if a third party situation does start to unfold. But Cam and Aminish, Seemingly a, a little bit better boxed up in terms of defending that forecast tower. Miro, Cooper, they recognize the fact that Cam and Minish kind of beat them to the punch in terms of basing up around the forecast. But that doesn't mean that Miro and Cooper aren't still going to try to challenge them for those Legion tactical grunts. They want that forecast key card. I can't fault them for it. Just so impactful when you know every single zone for the entirety of a lobby. Oh, oh my gosh. Rise. A little bit higher. And Rise rips that guy right out of this game and onto the battle bus. And this is the difference for Rise and Yamzo right here. They have this center map just on a block, but let's take a look at Muzz and Paper who have been jumped on by N Pen. Okay, so they're fencing fields. Contested teams goes in the way of Muzz and Paper right now as they finish off M Pit and Aaron pretty quickly, I might add. As as soon as we jump in, the battle is over. And yeah, look at all the extra heals here as well. So this is this is really, really important because not only do they have this zone on top of them, now they have this excess amount of additional resources to play with for a second here. They're going to give it up. They're going to say, all right, well, now we got time. Let's go ahead and cap off our material. Come back. Can maybe expect to see Muzz and Paper a little bit later on, more towards the, the combat cash exchange. Because that fencing, it's one thing that they probably will have a little bit of struggles with is getting metal from that POI. 
So the cash can certainly mitigate some of those woes. And as re-ritual, NPC spawn in for the forecast tower. Re and ritual take him completely uncontested. But we saw in the last lobby that even if a team has that zone knowledge, it doesn't guarantee that they'll still be a duo by the time we get to some of our closing final zones. Look at this. Cooper and Miro are very, very hesitant right now. They're like, we know we saw a duo here. Where did they go? And then and, and the AI are just walking around, right? The NPCs are walking away. So that's going to be everything they need to know at this point. And it just shows you that some teams are, yeah, they want, of course, the, the information from the forecast tower, but they're not willing to throw their tournament away, let alone take a potential clash with the team that has a heart to contest them at it. And they just give it up. That's, if anything, more of a surprise than I was expecting for how this is going to play out. Definitely had anticipated Cam and Aminish to do things out a little bit further there with Miro and Cooper, but you probably know something we don't. And for them to back off in the manner that they did, likely just a circumstance where they felt they needed to prioritize getting some surge damage online and didn't want to risk finding themselves being elimed because these players, a lot of them tend to do tons of creative, tons of box fights against each other. Cold Acorn found the perfect time to strike up against the likes of Vanillas and Convict. Convict and Vanillas, though, will manage to fall back. This is, this is sneaky, though, from Cold and Acorn just waiting directly outside of the vault here at Fencing Fields to see if anybody might be trying to scurry in, grab some leftovers. But Cold and Acorn, they've got to make their exit eventually. Although they do seem rather content for the time being to kind of just wait things out and really just soup up their weapons off the mob bench. And I think it's like really worth mentioning the fact that they are absolutely baiting the, these wood walls. Like they know exactly what they're doing. This is intentional. Cold and Acorn, no better than to sit around in a wood base, right? That's not a that's not a base set up for defense. So they were on offense that entire time, whether it kind of realized it or not. And it's the little things, right, that give players the advantage. But now we jump in with this team here, Crackly and Mr. Forever Zone Wars, as we all know. <laughs> it's a little community homage here. I'm almost surprised that this guy isn't just like contesting Jiven with that kind of name every single game, but I guess everybody's got their own favorite bowl of cereal that they like to go for. And for Forever Zone Wars, came up short there. And now things getting seemingly worse as they've caught the attention of Acorn and Cold. A couple of shots exchanged onto Crackly. The weight Flicks. taco, Epic's down. He definitely is. For a moment there, thought that Clicks was gonna see if he could try to find some semblance of a recovery, but no, Clicks just completely pushed out and being held currently by Oliver OG and Asian Jeff. I feel like this is a mental thing right now. Epic Whale just fell off of high ground and cost them game number seven, the Victor Royale. And he's starting game number eight off to a, you know, arguably bad start. Like this is, this is just a compounding situation right now. We need to see him get right back in the zone. There's no time to waste here. It's a 1.5x type day, but hold up. I just see re-cranking and I think to myself, I need to watch this battle. So already getting fully cut up here, Ritual finds himself on the high ground. Try to look down. I see Aviv. I see Booga. And I see another team here in the mix. And already everyone battling for this little bit of high ground. Look at the size of the structure here. This has not been a clean fight by any means. Reek down to one big pot shows that he's been tagged several amount of times already. And it's just an all-out scrappy, scrappy fight here. And not only that, there's another team just starting to decide of whether or not they want to jump in here have a feeling it was Yumi and Vert that were actually first situated here at the Stormy Station. Re and Ritual probably initially feeling out that 
they were going to be able to, to find a possible box fight, possible couple of eliminations, or, or just getting some good surge damage online. But with Booga and Aviv now entering the mix here, MDF, have to expect that these teams are just going to fall back for the time being. Nobody wants to find themselves on the victim side of a, of a third party encounter. And Clicks, all the while, just doing everything he can to try and survive as a solo, try and see if he can get make his way to a reboot van. But with Cam and a Minish directly in front of him, grappling out, beautiful shot there out of Clicks. That sniper shot might be all it takes. He's got his surge damage. Now it's a full beeline sprint towards the reboot van and just hoping that they've got enough damage out there. That'll make things a little bit easier when he starts to venture back towards the zone, ideally with Epic next to him. Yeah, you can see that the team there was about to push clicks and then something turned around, something made them make a different decision. They double back off of a knocked body. So it does seem like, you know, things just align right now for clicks here to actually give him an opportunity to extend this tournament run right now. And it's not gonna be any easier though, the time use the time wasted the materials you know invested all of this stuff will start to compound it'll begin to add up and clicks is going to have to live with the decision of whether or not this is worth it this late into the stages of the early game because we're getting right to the mid game here for some it might be impossible to actually bounce back from but you can't count out someone like clicks who seems to be determined here for peter bot and boyo now we jump in they're absolutely situated here fully fully set up doesn't seem like they've gotten the chance to engage with anyone just yet and that just tells me that whoever's next to them is going to be in for a world of trouble and it's cooper and mirror who might be the first targets taco they have max material they have max what seems like uh heals and ammunition I'm, I'm thinking they don't have enough surge i'm thinking they will just have to face check cooper and mirror here shortly Peterbot and Poya have definitely had their fair share of problems as far as that search damage threshold is concerned, but whether or not they want to tango with Cooper and Miro, only time will tell. This re ritual, they do have zone knowledge, but they want more damage. They want more points. Elimination is going to be one of the easiest ways to find them as Zooks just try to do his best to scurry away from Reed here, but Reed actually does lose Ritual in the process. Pretty massive blow here. Now for Reed, he has to commit. He pickaxed him. Pickaxed him down, but no, then gets found out by Bull and then gets pickaxed back. It seems like what just happened? It was looking so good for a second for Reed and Ritual and everything turns upside down. We are seeing the, the collapse, the downfall now of Team after team, top teams as well. Last game, Re had to put everything on his back and it might be Ritual who's having a tough time here as far as that duo's performance is concerned. Just like it might be Epic Whale who's having a top, uh, you know, a tougher time with his performance right now. So it's crazy to see how, you know, a duo really does come down to both players being in peak performance. Can't be one or the other. But for Reed and Ritual, and being a team that gets an uncontested, confirmed forecast tower every single match, for them to be so low on Surge that they feel the necessity to go for those desperation box fights, and they're on fringe of zone from that position as well, by the way. Not even sure if they had been successful with eliminating Bolts and Zooks there, th that it would have even been a super lucrative engagement because sure, you would have gotten the surge, but then you're being held. We saw other teams from across the hill in positions of elevation inside of zone that have all the luxury of, of just taking free pot shots. So even if Ritual and Reet had managed to pull off the, the double elimination there, the way they would have likely been held on edge of zone, even with future zone knowledge, just seems as though a lot of their early game is being heavily dictated by the fact that they aren't contested at their drop because they have been struggling for surge damage in game seven and now eight here today. And it's not just that, that's the exact same issue they were having yesterday. When you looked at and compared the teams that had the forecast tower knowledge and the information, those teams were positioning intentionally 
like in the best spots possible right to favor the next zone but you did notice that re and ritual were consistently being on the edges and it was most noticeable in that game where miro and cooper just so happened to pick it up and i remember commentating about it because i was surprised i'm like look at how out of position re and ritual are for a team that has the information right but then on the other side Cooper and Miro set up with like max mats, all the ammunition, right? The heals. It was just like two completely different stories. Either way, they definitely want to get themselves sorted on the same page. And they've got to do it soon because the leaderboard's not going to wait for you, especially not with that one and a half times point multiplier in effect. Keep in mind, it applies to all points, not just elimination. So, sure, eliminations bumped up to six points each today, but. So is placements and Victor Royale netting a hundred points is a very quick way to either lose or gain the positioning on that leaderboard. They just singled out a team all the way on the edge and they're going right in for it because they need the surge tags. This is like unironic. This is like actually ironic because I was just talking about they when they have the forecast hour, they position themselves so well and we haven't seen a worse decision to jump outside the base with less surge possible. I feel like I just cast a curse here on Cooper so bad. that That's a crazy play to make. Look, uh, the crash pad rotate might like, be silent. How did silent. that just all just line up? Like, I don't even know. Everyone was looking at Cooper and Miro the moment that they entered the air. Yamzo rise, edgy tavern, edgy tavern though, getting pieced up across the river. Cooper, Miro though, on the other end, they're gonna actually find themselves falling, eliminated by Wick and Somzi, the team that they had initially planned to pounce upon, now being the ones to eliminate them. And I, just, I was just gonna say, death as well. Clutch solo performance there for a moment does manage to secure. I was at gonna least say, two it, it, it's, it's worth mentioning death and polarizer up at the top of the standings after that last victory out really put them in the conversation and this is an incredible clutch right here to not only fight back the duo that jumped on them but survive the onslaught that was the server lobby's focus there and it seems like everyone was content after those first set of eliminations went through so it just seems like most of the players on the edge needed just a couple tags right normally you'll notice players won't get you know greedy for it but you just you just compare that to what cooper and miro did it was complete, complete greed there jumping in and they couldn't have timed it worse. Half halfway greed, halfway a definite necessity though, given that they were below on their surge, probably recognizing the fact that none of the other teams that are based up on the other side of that river were gonna be willing to peak anytime soon. Impressively enough though, clicks and Epic, it's been an uphill battle the entire time here in game eight. And we're seeing okay. the dynamic now between a duo and a solo Death doing his best to continue clutching things up here for himself and Polarize, especially when you find yourself starting off the day with a victory royale here in match seven. You know Death just wants to keep making a play for placements. He's got at least two med kits, so he can definitely bide his time a decent ways. He's gonna probably commit to sticking towards this backside of the zone. He'll get the audio cues from teams as they start using the grapple blades forward. And with this Reaper Sniper, if he can manage to connect even one or two shots, that should be enough surge for Death to just continue maintaining this low ground position and just trying to stay out of sight, out of mind from the rest of the lobby. Definitely tough situation to be in, but look at this, the Yamzo and Rise right now. Like you said, position nestled, right? Comfortably at the moment. Have this huge runway in front of them and you have to think if Aquan and Cold can't keep up their exceptional run so far, it's going to be pretty, pretty tough. But I think the, the moral of the story right now is, you know, regardless of what's going on, you can have all the information in the world with the, you know, the forecast towers. It's, it's not easy by any means, especially given the server intensity. Hold up. Take a look here. Clicks and Epic are right back in the game now with that elimination there onto vanillas that's going to give them not only material but all of the loadout preference required for epic will to really be comfortable here and there it is extra shields excess med kits now they will need probably a couple more tags here to go ahead and take the lead get a glimpse at a viva right here he's got jiving on the outskirts of the zone 
They're at four elims. Aviv and Buga have certainly been making work of holding teams on edge of zone. But this next max pool is going to be a little bit more complicated as Aviv Buga recognizing the fact that there's nobody else left to shoot at. And there's still even 40 limbs, barely 20 above the surge damage threshold here. Yamzo Rise, our number one team currently in a massive fight against this storm surge as well. You can see Rise looking for opportunities to peek. The other issue that these two might encounter is when teams start to rotate, they want to be able to take shots, but they've got to worry about not getting caught up healing at the same time, or else they might miss those opportunities to get those much needed tags online. Take a look at the move right here. Off they go. 440 points now. The placement points are going to start to rack in, but just 15 damage above. They will have to land on the team as well. If even Booga are desperate for something, but there's no life. Nothing there for them. No lifeline to pick up. It's Redux who makes the comeback here. Dan and Redux are just having quite the first two games so far as they are opening themselves up to another potential end game here. Meanwhile, Cold and Acorn are also on the tier. Doing well. Two eliminations here. Still sitting pretty strong. Oh no, they singled out the young New York City's prodigy death here. <laughs> Back against the wall now, forced down into this ultimate low territory. Not ideal position to be in by any means. And look, he's starting to run thin on material here. But again, with these two med kits, he could potentially hold Acorn and Cold at bay. There is a cache next to death as well. So he might have an opportunity here to come up big, but it's yeah, just going to depend on Acorn and Cold. <laughs> Yeah, he's just, just going to give this up. He's like, you know what? I don't want to be here. I need to get up this low ground. I need to get him from the surge or the storm here. And then he has to deal with his surge here as well. He's going to swing around, picks up some of that nice. cash. Oh, he does secure some loot. Acorn and Cold leaving made that a possibility for death. So he was able to hold out just long enough. Now, utilizing this med kit. But Yamzo, rise. Saw them at the top. Now, Yamzo stuck at the bottom here as he gets knocked. Rise is going to keep things moving forward. Pretty aggressive rotation there from Rise as well, cutting directly through the center with that grapple. It's incredible that it's only Yamzo that falls for the time being, but Cold, Acorn looking to shake things up even further. One more elimination being added to the count. That's going to be onto Chris Spear. And Death still hanging on. Not only that, Clicks and Epic Whale are actually on high ground right now. I can't believe they're trying to play as a high ground team in this very difficult meta with grapple hooks in place. That's insane. But look at this. Death almost, literally almost ends Cold and Acorn's run right there. But he only clips him with a body tag and not a full on headshot. And then he gets spotted out by a friend of his from Prodigy there too. But look at this, Peter Bot goes for high ground. Clicks an Epic Whale now has to fight for it. Down goes Boyle. Wow. And Clicks is playing so, so well. But the storm is relentless. The damage comes in and no one doesn't see the team lurking next door. And now it's up to Epic Whale here to make up for the last game. But Epic, he only has, actually he's completely out of materials, but right. Rise yeah. is completely out of his own life. An elimination and well placed shot there. Now, Peter Bond operating as a solo because of clicks and Epic Will taking out his teammate. Peter Bond, final med kit has been expended, but take a look at the high ground. It has swapped around. Dash of Rooney and Seek now way up above the rest of the lobby. Baka and Pars, on the other hand, we've seen these two be warriors of the lobby and still standing tall here. Stinks transition into the final moving zone. Baka, Pars. They want to make sure that they stay tarping through these mid-ground layers. Height, you have to expect they're going to look to chop it sometime soon, but that's only if Peter Bach can even work his way up there. Zooks. Gets delivered right into the hands of Bach and Pars, though, as they start to turn up here. Seven eliminations. 
and still counting, but they're out of material now. Can they find? What did they just pick up there? Hopefully it was something to do with Mats there. Zeus is on the heels here. Bach and Pars, if they don't quickly finish this elimination, the pressure from up above is going to start to catch up. Here comes the counter shots. There goes the wood builds. But Metal starts to come out here. They still have a chance here. Anything can absolutely happen right now. Dash and Seek are just in the game with some material, but it seems like they're indecisive of how exactly they want to execute here. But it's going to be all or nothing. And I like that they're holding back here. If they jump in, it might just be the end of them. One goes down, and now they have the advantage. But Pars, too soon, too early, goes back for the heal off. I don't think he's going to have enough med kits to survive the storm here. But at this rate, who oh. knows? <laughs> I'm wrong. He's got five. Wait, and but he's got... sickness. It looked so promising until it wow. wasn't. Seek and Dasher Rooney probably counting their lucky stars because the moment that they watch this one back, MDF, and they see Pars running around, five medkits in hand, they definitely find themselves a, a little bit more on the fortunate side of things here in game number eight, but a win's a win. And to start the day off, game number seven didn't exactly pan out for them, but game number eight, they definitely found the points they wanted. That had to be storm sickness, right? Like he had five med kits. I think he had enough time. It, it should have, it should have lasted likely a little longer, but you know what? Ultimately seek and dash get a victory royale under the 1.5 X point multiplier which is going to give them a huge opportunity to get up into some new prizing brackets if anything at all so getting a win during a grand finals weekend is absolutely impressive and it's crazy too because they really slid in at the last moment and just played spoiler to the teams that were trying to tackle height but we didn't get to follow along with zeke and dash running the entire time but you know who might have it's the analyst so zeke we'll get it back to you guys you know, I love that MDF kind of calls out there that they may not be playing for these top numbers, but these guys with that victory out will now be jumping up to attack higher brackets here when it comes to that final payout. That's huge, right? When we're talking about life-changing money like this, being able to suddenly find yourself earning more money because of a single victory royale, that is massive. Congratulations to Seek and Dash Aruni. You guys got yourselves the victory royale. And as we've already seen out of just game number one, because of this multiplier, even just the victory royale is so vital and can make such a big difference to how many points you end up with. Yeah, I mean, that's that's 100 plus points for them right there. They were sitting in 29th before, or no, not 29th, uh, 31st before that game. So that's gonna be a big jump for them. And honestly, it's just a classic. We saw this, Kelly, a lot of teams were fighting for high. In fact, two of our big name teams, Clicks and Epic Wheelovers, Peterbot and Polio on the higher ground. Kanan and Aegis was also getting a little bit involved but the fight, it just doesn't go either of their ways, right? Trades on each side and seek and dash. They see the opportunity and they go up and they win the game because of it. And I think this is a lesson that a lot of these duos need to kind of realize is that trying to take height around zone nine, zone 10. It's tough. Just, it, it, it is rough. And, it, and if it works out, it works out great, right? You're able to get refreshes, you're able to control the lobby, but it just doesn't seem to be working out. And it's these duos that are grabbing height at zone 11, if not even zone 12, that are able to actually win from high ground. But it's not like they're holding high ground, right? It's it's such a rough position to be into. And to see teams like Clicks and Epic Whale go for it time and time again, especially after having such incredible comeback games where Clicks repeatedly is bringing back Epic Whale live, we know that they can grab the victory royale. They just have to change up their strategy a little bit. Yeah, and so the duos, right, in that situation, they also didn't have much, right, from Seek. If that had been Clicks and Epic Whale, like, things would have been different. But a lot of these duos, like you're saying, Kelly, they are trying to attack that high ground very, very early. Let's take a look at our standings. I want to see how things are going after just game, num game number two on the day. With four more games now, this could go any which way. Iamso and Rise still holding down that number one spot. I don't know how they are managing to still just keep this lead ahead of Acorn and Cold. It seems like whatever Acorn and Cold, every time they have even just a moment, it's like, nope, Iamso and Rise, they've managed to do enough just to keep you guys at bay. 
Yeah, crazy stuff. I mean, a 15th place right there. Three eliminations for Yamazan Rise. So not technically the best game, but still enough to hold them in that top spot. We got to give a big shout out to Baka and Parser. Third place up seven Ooh. places on the leaderboard right there. Kelly, they've been contested every single game. I feel like we've seen the fight as well every single game. How right. do they just keep continuously winning off spawn? It's supposed to be a 50-50. I, I don't think we can consider that a 50-50 anymore. No, definitely not with this duo right here. I love to see them rising up. They were in 10th place before that game. So to see them jump up like that is exactly where they want to be. And there's a lot of duos that seem to be, I mean, I thought Yamzo and Rice fell short there, but clearly it wasn't that short enough. So still being in first place, I think that this is still anyone's game if yeah. the om zone rise has another game like what we just saw right there it really does give an opportunity for teams like acorn and cold and peter von Poyo, who also jumped up a few placements as well to run away with this yeah monster d face kind of called out and said something really interesting to me he said this is a compounding situation so either you're going to stay alive and you're going to start to compound these points right you're going to start to develop this lead or you're going to fall you're going to fall way too early outside of placement without elims and suddenly everyone is just going to be walking up to you or surpassing you, right? Because of this multiplayer with four more games to go, what do we need to change up, right? What are the things we need to do right here, right now to find ourselves in the number one spot? Well, coming into day number two, actually both of the teams that have won each of the games so far, neither one of those teams were actually in the top 10. So we're thinking, oh, you know, Yamzo and Rise aren't having their typical types of games. Well, neither are really any of the other teams in the top 10. So we got to see some of the some of these teams, some of the favorites really have those pop off performances that we're used to seeing from them. I definitely think having smarter mid game engagements, which obviously isn't something that you can actively decide if you're going to have something that's easier or smart and disengaging, I think is a really big part of it. Making sure that you have enough mats in the end game to be able to survive long enough. We see a lot of these duos, a lot of our top duos kind of having storm sickness, having no mats. So then when they do go down to a solo clutch, it's just scrambles and some of them are able to pull it out. But obviously that is not the position you want to be in absolutely brutal and i want to watch more games we're not going to hold you up any longer let's jump back into the action casters take it away thank you so very much zeke that's right the action is going to continue to unfold here we're approaching essentially the halfway mark of day number two now and it couldn't be more pivotal to stay alive at this point taco i mean we have to see some adjustments i've been rooting for re and ritual this entire season and that last game it was just a an extremely difficult one to watch where they just couldn't get the surge tags that they needed yeah despite the fact that i think a, a lot of the na fan base is kind of pinning re and ritual initially as the main characters it seems like some new protagonists are starting to surface here mdf because the fact that We've seen the likes of Death and Polarize, and right. now we're just going to continue, I think, seeing teams doing everything in their power to try and claw their way into that top 10 leaderboard. And forget about top 10, it's about the top five, but we've got the battle bus ready for game number nine. Well, that's right, the battle bus is ready. So here we have it. One thing to think about, I know the leaderboard might seem a little bit intimidating when you see first place 30 points ahead of second but that's really not much in in hindsight it's just a couple of placement points it's like you know a few eliminations essentially it's not that much of a gap and that's what we mean by you cannot afford to fall early Bach and Pars here being contested it's like a blessing and a curse right now. The blessing side of it is that they are winning so quickly here that it is just giving them a ridiculous amount of points and a nice, comfortable lead on Surge. But not only that, they get to loot their draw spot extremely quick and put the pedal to the metal when it comes to the teams nearby for fighting for that forecast tower. On the other side, Acorn and Cold have a completely different situation on hand. Their games have been... Again, notoriously slower. However, still they're securing the vault, right? And they just have to survive this drop being that it's triple contested. It just doesn't get any more difficult than that, Taco. For sure. And want to elaborate a little bit more in terms of Baka and Pars' storyline. Now it's shaping up here today. But first we got to get to the likes of Rapid and Batman Booga. One more time facing off in an immediate off-spawn contest. 
with Skater and Dalty. And you have to remember as well what happened yesterday at this drop. Skater and Dalty, doesn't matter how out they might seem, you can never really an anticipate them to be a, a fully written off duo here because the way that they managed to turn and burn on Rapid and Batman Booga in, in yesterday's day one matches was something that I don't think many people would have ever expected to see happen, especially not to a player like Rapid, but happens to the best of us. Sometimes you just don't get the shots that you need. Misplace a couple of edits here and there or miss entirely, but Rapid definitely wanting some redemption here. Tries to tackle this initial one versus two. He does have Batman Booga now wrapping around. And with a slight elevation over Dalty and Skater, Rapid and Batman Booga, they've got to chip away at the build first. Take a look at this. Great tags here from Batman Booga, but he doesn't like the fact that he nearly loses his shield, gets right back to his teammate. And while this is going on, you know, a question's running through my mind. Like, who and Miro have been contested? Have they been pushing off, you know, Veer and Sineo on the drop? Have they just been outlanding them? Have they even been able to even take that battle? So I'm not sure what's been unfolding on that side, but hold up. Things almost go south here for Rapid, but he does manage to fulfill the elimination there. Here's a look at Aviv and Booga, who are creeping up the standings right now. We haven't covered too much of their mid games, but we are seeing them here and there sprinkle their way into end game. And just look at the, look at the points. Right? Things are starting to add up here. Yeah, but for Aviv and Booga, down at the lovely lodge, what's surprising to see... No, actually, it's going to be the Unward Manor. I take that back. That explains why the likes of Edgy and Tavern are trying to intervene. Seems as though Booga and Aviv made a really smart rotation to pick off at least one of the two. That's six points for Aviv and Booga to start... Game number nine, and Aviv still looking for more. But just gonna come up short here. You see Booga, the lock on pistol, I believe. Just looking for some of the freebie surge tags. But from that range, probably only 17 a pop. What I would expect, but every little bit counts at this point. Well, everything's looking good here for Booga and Aviv right now as they will have all the time in the world to go ahead and get into the action here. Polarizing death, though, in a fight against Cam and Aminish, and it just seems like the uh, situation's been flipped upside down. Yesterday, Cam and Aminish were off to an incredibly strong start, getting a glimpse of top five for a couple rounds there. But now it's Prodigy and Polarize, who, after that victory royale, have rocketed their way right up into this conversation, into the standings. And that's what happens when you perform stronger on a day where the point thresholds are different, where everything means a lot more. You'll just earn more for your placement points and eliminations. But look at this, Boya and Peterbot, this time contested for the forecast tower by a team that's pretty desperate here and snacking possessed they have to do something big and what bigger thing to do than try to snatch up the information of the forecast tower but they're not happy with the situation at hand they're not happy to fight for this one they end up giving it up not only that but with a team base so far up on a hill that can oversee both Poyo and peterbot as well as the duo that was just contemplating challenging them. That's part of the reason why we see Peterbot go to the other side of his box. He doesn't want to try and look for peaks from a position that he knows a team with that much elevation over him probably had the advantage. Must knock the acorns in the feed right there. Keep an eye on that. This could be a huge problem. Cold here by himself on the high ground looking down now. Okay, so it had to be to the hands of a well-timed snipe or something but either way it's not looking good that cold is just gonna say you know what take the elimination take all the loot you want i'm gonna get out of here and play for the tournament life and he leaves acorn behind and now Muzz and paper have to think wait a second did he leave his teammate did he pick him up are they gone that's crazy that acorn is still crawling around right now What's even crazier is that neither Muzz or Paper 
even had a, a Reaper sniper at their disposal in cold. You can see only 11 yep. bullets left in this Mythic Striker. Might be one of the best weapons in the game, but not if you don't have any ammo to actually look for those long range battles. Cold probably just praying that Muzz and Paper don't happen to stumble upon this bush, but Muzz and Paper might be the least of his concern. There's a team approaching right next to him. It's going to be Cam and a Minish. They're not bothering to check the bush just yet, but there are some shots being sent their way. So Cold, even if not he building. isn't spotted out by Cam and a Minish, though, he still has to worry about the team that's taking shots at them from over by the ship at station. Well, I'm more curious... Minish just like, yeah, dude, I'm just gonna dodge. Bro. Bro's running behind the bushes. Like, instead of building a wall <laughs> there, that was crazy. But you know what? I'm not even gonna second guess the decision making from Cold here. He, he's got Acorn, he's got himself. You know, Acorn is one of the one of the greatest IGLs we have ever watched play Fortnite. So if the call was made, dude, position up, don't worry about it. Play play storm. I, I trust in it, but now I'm I'm just a little bit, I'm a little bit weary after watching Bach and Pars try to play that heal off and the storm sickness catch up, right? So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Now you have to begin to think about these and get away your options. You can't really trust the storm all that much because in the end game, it could just come full circle there and cost you a win. But for polarizing death here, they've tried to claw their way back into this game. You could tell that the material has been bad ever since that engagement up against Cam and Diminish. Look at this, they're going for the fight here. Onto Maquin and Blake, and Maquin just gets deleted by death. I think he caught him with a side angle, and it's just not looking good right now for Blake at all. Blake is unfortunately just a rat in a trap at this point because Polarize and Death, they're not gonna let this one go. Blake, the teeniest bit of HP is his silver lining currently. He's doing a relatively decent job though at wasting Polarize and Death's time. And at that's... least forcing them to work for this final elimination. But he will inevitably fall. Just too much pressure being applied, but definitely got a good chunk out of Death's HP in the process. Granted, there are ample heals surrounding Death and Polarize though, so they should be able to regen their shields no problem. Peter bot though. Just oh yeah. Now That's we know where the issue stems That's from. That's how it happened. So Peter bot is blame the, him. He, he's actually the origin story of the woes of Blake and Macwood for game number nine. <laughs> I'm laughing because TikTok's gonna love that one. Chat always goes <laughs> crazy for Peter bot plays. The I fact love that Macwood was that exposed and didn't even recognize the fact that there was a possibility of someone like Peterbot managing to find an angle Wait. on him. Did you just see Players. that? The, the leaderboard just flashed for a second. Yams and Rise are down. Fully finished right now, which means Acorn and Cold. If Cold can pick up Acorn and run this one back, they have a chance to overtake first place for the first time today but more importantly the rest of top 10 have a chance now to start to close the gap this is going to become an extremely extremely competitive leaderboard when this is all said and done because if yamzo and rise are out the game that is the biggest piece of the puzzle that needed to be solved for everyone else inside the top 10. you just know that a team like acorn and cold if they recognize the fact that Yamzo and Rise have been eliminated from this lobby. Maybe expect them to slow things down a little bit because now they don't necessarily need to go for an overly aggressive box fight. Just find your surge tags, play it back. Don't force any unnecessary positioning or any unnecessary over peaking. We've already seen a handful of players finding their faces getting ripped off in the process for Challenging on the peaks here. Just never know when someone with a sniper is right around the corner. Re and Ritual, much different position right now. Keep in mind, this is a team that spawns on the eastern side. And they've played all the way around here. Beautiful tag right there by Ritual. 
and just much, much better here as far as the damage is concerned. That's going to really jump them up, give them a little room to work with there. And they find another one on the rotation there, so things are looking up here. But we jump over a cold. Cold likely... I, I pray that he has picked up the reboot card. He's just waiting for the save at this point. Because if not, time has to be running extremely thin here. But yes, the fact that he's going way out to the storm here shows that he is likely going to try to play for the other reboot off in the distance here. And he's just, again, another game where Cold and Acorn have to play this storm. But you saw what they were able to do last time when they got back in day one. They turned it into something. And just last game as well, watching Clix and Epic Whale, when Clix picked up Epic, they turned that into nearly a victory royale. So anything can happen. But while we're looking at a solo Cole, I couldn't help but notice that it was Baka and Pars situated inside of fencing fields. And if it was Baka and Pars that got that elimination onto Acorn MDF, there's a high likelihood that they're gonna recognize the fact there's no way Cold can make a reboot ban play inside of fencing fields. That's just gonna be impossible. So they're gonna hold it down. They held Cold. They forced him to move even further into Storm. And now, wouldn't be surprised to and see look. them. They're gonna offer this elevation. They might even look to just turn around, play back, and maybe even try and hold Cold and Acorn since they already forced them into such an awkward position inside a Storm just to find that initial reboot. I'm just, I'm just so fascinated by the fact that they're both at 440 points tied up. First place is down. This is their one opportunity to really, really take a stance here against Yamzo and Rise. And will they be able to raise to the equation? Rise to the situation is the question here, but let's see it. Baka, Pars find themselves in a new zone here just underneath the Rift Island. Rift Island, how, what? Hello, teams. Welcome to the Rift Island. This is where you come for your brick. Maybe even a little bit of more material heals and, and weapon upgrades. My gosh, there's so many teams up here. Looking a little bit more like Rift Mansion at this point with how many <laughs> residents are actually trying to take place up here on top of the Rift Island. But Miro and Cooper being one of the teams Miro taking full advantage of this height. Gonna try and apply some pressure onto the teams. Boxed up underneath the Rift Island. Probably just waiting out their moment. They have the launch pad. They've also got Rift surrounding them for fast rotates. And with that Flowberry Fizz, if Cooper doesn't have any crash pads, then Miro can still make a, a relatively safe departure off of this Rift Island. But just a slow play right now. Mira and Cooper, they're, they're not really trying to overexpose themselves by any means. They're just looking for teams that get slightly distracted. I'm glad we can check back in, though, with Cole and Acorn. But keep in mind, there is a team. This is where Baka, this is where Pars. The moment they might have been waiting for. And as Cole makes his way into zone, he's going to spot their boxes already under such heavy fire and maybe even coming from Maxo and Dolzier on the opposite end of this hill. Yeah, a lot of shots coming in. Pressure's on. HP's low here for Cold and Acorn. They're sitting up right next to Bach and Pars. Of all the rotations that any of these teams could have made, the fact that they landed right around the same spot is concerning to say the least. But look at this. Everyone's heading west. I'm curious to see why Bach and Pars decided to go in that direction as opposed to another, but maybe it was for the rifts there. And yes, it is. They go straight for it. Everyone's off. Trying to escape now at this point. I like that Cold and Acorn are going to sit back here and go for tags as opposed to rush into the new zone because everyone is going to be floating across. But yeah, they recognize they can't play with the zone for too much longer. Can't afford to take Storm. Players surround them. They find a rift there. And Neko almost hits the tag. But Acorn gets hit before he jumps in as well. So look at this. They're below the surge now. They will have to either position up extremely strategically or land on a team. And 
I'm watching markers come out, so we don't really know what the decision is going to be just yet. Looks an epic whale are landing here, and it seems like everyone that's landing in this general area are teams that are deciding, I probably need to fight, so I'm going to stay next to all of these other teams. And the story goes on, but hey, look, the script's already been written. These guys have a chance here. But the Yom's going to rise out, and this, again, might be... One of the only lucky opportunities to get to line up this way and Colton Acorn continue to take advantage of the opportunity that has been presented before them. And my oh my, with every step they take towards the lead, things become a little more interesting. It's always insane to me when teams are in a moderately shambled situation because Acorn and Cold, with how deep of a rotate they had to make from inside of the storm, they had expended most of their white heels, but Zavi and Neko just gifting them every single resource imaginable as far as shields and white HP heals are concerned. A benefit that clicks can only wish them an epic well might be so lucky to stumble upon as they'll find a, a very temporary relief from that surge damage. But as soon as things tick over, you have to keep in mind, they're still relatively low on their surge damage. They need to take an engagement. They don't have that many materials either, so a refresh is oh. the utmost necessity here. Yeah, they're, they're gonna have to do it. They've seen this happen before where they crash pad into a team and it works again, but Epic lets his side guard down and the shots come in. And that's it. Epic Whale clicks, get halted for a second. Baka and Pars, it seems like they met the same fate here. Completely different story though. They were wow. comfortably above the surge and they just get deleted. You could tell that the server pressure was definitely adding to that rotate. That is so, so tough. And look at this now, shots from above. Acorn and Cold are just taking full advantage of the lobby right now, of the situation at hand. It's the fact that Cold and Acorn are even in such a favorable position in the first place though. The fact that they didn't get held and were able to find such an immediate refresh. It's that last refresh onto Xavi and Echo Balls that might actually result in netting Acorn and Cold a victory royale here in this lobby because they have materials, they have heals, and they've got everyone inside of that top three down for the count as well. So this is all the Acorn and Cold Show and seeing how far they can actually go because they have a really strong chance to leapfrog Yamzo and Rise in that first place position here now, MDF. If they just stick to playing their game and keeping their cool. Yeah, here's the thing. This is where it's going to happen. This is where the placement points are going to start to tumble on in. And if they can soak up a top 15, a top 10 right now, they're going to be closing in on that 500 point threshold. They'll be the first ones to really begin to break away. Pewdiebot and Boyo have a chance here as well, but they're going to need like a top five, maybe better, in order to get up there and earn another 70 points. But... Look at this, they're starting to eye up potentially threats right here. Threats, who does he know? He has a weakened wall there. Might just have Peterbot flying right on in through. Wouldn't put it past him, but no, shots coming from down low. It's Day, Day in another end game. Okay, I just need to see Day's points at this point. This is three games in a row. We're seeing him make it to mid game, but Redux gets taken down right here. So it's gonna be up to Day by himself. Either way, impressive nonetheless. 187 points from being at all the way at the bottom, all jumping way on up. No, that's what happens when you have those 1.5 X points. Anything can happen. It's going to be tough, though. Shots are coming in here for Peter Bot and Boyo. It is not looking good at all. These trades are not going in their favor, Taco. They're not finding the tags that they're hunting for right now. They're trying to force it, which, of course, is never a great recipe, but they kind of have to as well right now. Yeah, right now, it's all about whether or not Peter Bot and Boyo can actually break through find an elimination on today and just keep paving their path forward is death polarized another elimination secured onto We're sphinx going. pump still running around somewhere because that's only one elim currently for death and you can see pump now on the other side of this wall death seemingly doesn't seem to recognize the fact that pump is lurking just behind him 
Gotta be careful. Pump could potentially make the play of a lifetime here. And double eliminate Polarized and Death if they're not careful. But it does seem as though the intention from Pump, at least for the time being, is lie low, stay hidden, and just move with the backside of the zone. Or get eliminated it. immediately. Yeah, they're still adding up. <laughs> they're earning points here. That's what's most important for Death and Polarized. They are now in the 400 point threshold range. This is top 10 page. This is it. This is starting to really close in. If they can earn 30 or 40 more points, I mean, they'll start taking off into that top five conversation. Let's look at Peterbot here, who, like we just said, was struggling, but he hits the sniper shot of the day there onto Duke, who was flying across the sky and manages to avoid the incoming fire here, staying alive. And even with shots coming in from behind, you cannot stop Peterbot once he gets going here. He is determined to jump into top five right now. But grappling through the center of the zone, Peter by bound to draw the attention of other players in the lobby. You can see his HP paying the price for that faster rotation. Sure, you got somewhat ideal positioning now, but definitely needs a refresh of some form if he wants to try and maintain hanging out in the mid ground. But if there's anybody that can get it done, Peter Bot is certainly someone I would look at and finding those two mech hits. Blessing in disguise here. Boogus Meanwhile, going. big stuff too from Boogs. Find that elimination onto Byla. Yeah, and he makes it quick and easy there too. Jumps right in, takes him down, picks up all the loot. No resistance there either. But, oh, misses the grapple hook. This is going to be a little dicey here, but luckily no one lands next to Aviv here. They have plenty of space to work with. Aviv sets up the two box for him. They're going to heal up and get right back into this game. They're Fights happening above them, and Aviv says, don't heal. Let's get these points. And they go right in for it. And it looks like the points are good as they find Vanillas there, and they pick up all that material. That's going to put them right back into the game here. And they have everything they need, but I'm looking at the zone here. It seems like it's going to bounce back. And Cold and Acorn continue to claw their way back from the depths into the stratosphere here as they now have points here to take the lead and they have done it. Top 15, I called it, is what they were gonna need to get a 500 point threshold breakthrough. And they have done just that, but look at this. I like what Cold is thinking there. He singled out some floors. Oh, the but crash they pad. Up, though. Oh, but a team jumps in. <laughs> and the grapple comes out and look at this taco. They position themselves pretty sweet here on the side of this mountain. No, this is the perfect spot to anchor up because halfway up the mountain face, if the zone does happen to pull back the other direction, they're still operating from that secondary height layer. It won't be too difficult for them to actually scale down the side of the mountain. Same story can't be said though for oh Buga and Aviv. Buga gonna pick up the materials that Aviv has chosen to drop. We saw them moments ago with a massive Refresh elimination, but now with Buga being left as a solo, he can't afford to keep tarping as aggressively as he once was. Another elimination going to be found onto Polarize. It's Re and Re and Cold Ritual. and Acorn. And they're so both happy. still in this. Re and Ritual are both still in this. They are literally making a comeback right now. And you have to assume that after that last game, number eight, the anger, the disappointment all starting to kick in here and they're going straight into performance mode and you'd love to see it here as they break into the top 10. Re and Ritual have done it. They've managed to jump right back in and stay relevant to the standings here. But Cold and Acorn have not stopped against all odds. Peter Bot sliding across. What is what? that? <laughs> Deletes Acorn and likely Cold right afterwards. What in the world did we just watch? Nah, Peterbot said, look at you, oh look at God. me. Action man at this I point can't. with that I slide can't. by elimination. That was insanity. Yeah, he got both of them. I don't see their names up anymore. Peterbot just ended Acorn and Cold, and he might have did it four at this point, re and Ritual, because they need the rooms to start closing in now. And incredible enough, look at the points here. They're going to probably overtake Yamzo and Rise if they can get another elimination. If they can 
literally finish off this other duo. It's all or nothing, and they find Trashy. Those are worth so much. They just jumped 20 more points, by the way, for that by itself. 2v1, though. They take fall damage. Bryce is going to get the elimination credit, and Ritual could not hit the shot, and Bryce will win the game. What a steal takeaway there for Bryce and Chubbs, though. Bryce operating as a solo, by the way, in that final moment. Just really smart. By the time that Reet and Ritual actually turn behind them to see who's actually making their approach from the ramps that they had just jumped off of, it's just too little too late. Bryce already catching the upper hand. A little bit of tag team efforts as well, though, from Trashy because without Trashy applying damage there onto Reet and Ritual, that two versus one situation is a lot less likely to be won by Bryce. Absolutely incredible win for Bryce right there in Chubbs. Bryce and Chubbs were off to a strong start, kind of lost their momentum, but with this win here, we have seen Bryce and Chubbs do some incredible things and make big plays and look, they won a game at Global Championships. In fact, I think they won a few games at Global Championships, and now they do it here in the grand final settings of this first chapter. So you have to really appreciate the fact that they're a team that can win. They have all the signs to be an elite squad this year. Bryce and Chubbs, just one of many teams coming to their true form here because it's the second day of Grands MDF. These are these teams' last chance to keep in mind only the team in first will solidify their spot at LAN later on this year for the Global Championship. As for how the leaderboard's currently looking, though, we're going to have to kick it back to Zeke, Vivid, and Kelly to give us the breakdown. Thank you guys so much. Bryce and Chubbs get themselves the victory royale. You saw I put it in his name, Day 2 Prodigy. Some no. duos just come alive on Day 2. But not only that, paired up with that victory royale, which again, we continue to stress because of this multiplier in day two, this means these guys are gonna be moving way up the leaderboard. So Bryce and Chubbs on 213 points. Of course, this victory royale contributing a lot. But guess what place they were in coming into day number two? They were in 49. Our Ooh. eyes have to continue to follow Bryce and Chubbs as day two continues, because this could be the story. This could be the comeback that this day two format kind of allows for, and it would be awesome to see. What a win for them. Yeah, they're, they're landing near that hazy hillside, and they are contested against Seek and Dash, and we've seen the success from them, so I'm wondering oh, if yeah. day one, there was just a lot of issues with that. 50-50 off drop, but to see them take that now, an incredible performance. So proud of them. Man, though, Re and Ritual, so <laughs> close. I, I'm actually a little surprised. It looked like Bryce 1v2'd them. I, I'm a little confused of what exactly happened there. We've seen Re and Ritual have such incredible fights, and so uh, I'm excited to see what exactly went wrong there for them. But regardless, either way, Re and Ritual getting a second place, and they were kind of running the low ground for most of that end game there. Definitely going to be jumping up the leaderboard as well. Yeah, I want to see this leaderboard, man. It is going absolutely crazy here in the North America Grand Finals. Remember, Acts of Champions, Global Championship spots, both on the line. And look at this. Acorn and Cold finally get out of Iamzo and Rise's shadow and they overtake that number one spot. Kelly, I love your call out of Reet and Ritual. Because of the multiplier, if they had gotten that big real, just imagine how much closer. If not, they might have overtaken Acorn and Cold. Yeah, it's it's so close. And, and here we're going to look at the run that Reet and Ritual had. I mean, you can see here already eight eliminations. And once again, they peak from the middle ground, going for the high ground chop here. And it's so late that they don't even really need to focus the late ground team. They were looking behind them. And I think that's kind of what threw them for a loop going up against Chubbs, which is just down. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, Bryce just down below. They drop down and it's a 1v2 and an incredible run there from Bryce. It's just so quick to be able to grab those eliminations, but still re and ritual with the 10 eliminations. That's going to get 60 points plus second place finish, clearly shooting them up the leaderboard. But for me, I, I hope we get to look at that leaderboard again, because between first and sixth place, it is such a short amount of points. Yeah, 440 there for Baca and Pars in sixth place. Acorn and Cold currently sitting in that number one spot. Listen, <laughs> It's Acorn and Colt's day, all right? These guys are going absolutely ham in a way that I don't know many people would have, like, 
predicted like yeah you predict okay they're amazing but these guys have taken it to a completely different level especially in a situation where you have to reboot your teammate you're put on such a back foot but for the duo vivid it didn't matter it was like they just played out their game like normal like nothing happened yeah you know you were going ahead and saying there that oh you know this is their day i'm gonna be honest it really hasn't been i feel like every single game that we've watched so far we've seen you know cold multiple times in a solo situation multiple yeah. reboots have to happen for this duo there there have been mistakes for this duo honestly it's almost impressive that they're in first place right now because they're really fighting an uphill battle against pretty much themselves. The mistakes that they're kind of making at some points during the game are making it so much harder. But I have no idea how you can get a reboot off in an FNCS Grand Finals lobby and then make it all the way into the end game like that. I mean, it takes some serious skill. Cold also using a very intelligent play because there was a reboot very very close to the storm edge that he could have rebooted acorn at but no he decided to actually go deeper into storm so that way nobody got the audio cue that a reboot was coming in very very smart it's those little things that are making the difference and you know allowing them to kind of come back from some of those mistakes well done for them first place right now yeah, and, and I mean, this might be a repeat of what we saw from last year in Major 1 for Chapter 4. They grabbed first place, and clearly they're an incredible duo throughout the entire year. They never placed below sixth place in the Grand Finals. I just, like you said, I, I don't want to see Cold in a solo situation anymore. I want to see them survive together. I want to see them have more than 15 mats at Zone 10. I want to see them be able to pull this off because with the lead that they already have right now, with just the perfect victory royale, they can skyrocket themselves ahead of the competition. That's right. And this is just how we're halfway. All right. This is it. We have this last half, only a handful of games left to go. Now, more than ever, duos lock in because we are fighting for a spot at the global championships. With that being said, we are ready to get back into more action. More Fortnite right here right now. So let's head into the back to your casters for the next game. Yeah, I think it's important to mention that you got to take a deep breath right now and really settle in to what is going on right now. I think Vivid put it best to me, Taco, just now. It's not even, like, perfect play that we're seeing by any means by the teams inside the top 10. In fact, they are all struggling with their own little individual things. And if they can't figure it out, new teams are going to come up and take their spots. This format has already proven it's the fact that the one and a half times point multiplier is making for some crazy comeback story action to possibly unfold here. So as we dive into game number 10, Battle Bus set for launch. Well, here we have it. There's only a couple of games left here now. We're past the halfway mark. We're jumping in to the late stages of this grand finals. And if you're Bakken Pars, I think you're pretty happy with this bus here because it's going to favor their side. It's going to allow them to touch down and again, likely play into their strengths, which seems to be dropping down and besting Aaron to the punch here in Chance. Chance is going to be a lot higher than Pars is and Bakken and Aaron are right there neck and neck. And look at this. Pars with the perfect drop here. Gets the weapon first, gets the finish as well in again all because the battle bus is closer to their drop is there's less variability involved they could just time it better right it, the little things really start to show you what teams are stronger what teams have more strengths in certain areas and Bach and Pars are taking full advantage of being contested right now when a lot of teams don't a lot of teams crumble when they're contested but not this duo no, Baka and Pars proving yet again. They knew heading into today that it was going to be a scrappy one. But given how day one went for them up against the likes of Chance Aaron and several other teams, because if Baka and Pars aren't quick finding one or both of those eliminations off the Chance and Aaron, we've seen numerous times already the third party action, the fourth party, even the fifth party, Baka and Pars both attesting to the fact that they were essentially getting pentaconned at their drop all day yesterday, so bound to have made the proper adjustment. Seeing them go 3-0 on the day so far, though, it's got to be a huge confidence swing for sure. And confidence is something that Batman Booga is going to need a lot of. Operating as a solo currently, lost Rapid relatively early on, over by the Research Rock, and it's Dalty, it's Skater. 
trying to just finalize the second half of what they started. They get this elimination quickly enough onto Batman Booga. It could open up Dalty and Skater for a little bit of an easier time positioning through the mid game because of the surge damage that they'd be able to acquire right now. Well, the action continues here. Dalty is on the move here, playing around the outskirts. That Mambuga doesn't recognize he's there, but does throw the walls down. Dalty plays it smart as well. Couple cones there. It's all textbook here, but because they have no tags, Batman Booga and Rapid are gonna get out of there, but Rapid, of course, is down and out. So since he can't do anything big, it's a full on disengage right now. Some teams fighting untold struggles here today. But for Cooper and Miro, it's all about just locking in. That seems to be the mentality for Cooper. As things continue, progress a little bit slower here. My pleasant Piazza. Cooper right now hanging out beachside. Farming out some of the chest in the sand. He is relatively split though from Mira, but with basically no population nearby. It's, it's a safe split to continue their loot path. Got re and Ritual here at the railways, but there's a team moving about their drop as well. So they do have to be extremely cautious right now. Danger ever so lurking close by. It's just one of those things where you never really know who's going to decide to do something a little bit different. Adjust their strats. It's Pumpin Sphinx who's encroaching on their territory. But now we jump in with Acorn and Cold here. Not looking to make the same mistakes they made last time up against Muzz and Paper. But instead, it's Mason and Aaron who seem to have a position advantage over them. But see, oh. all these teams at Fencing Fields... It's like a, a very steady rotation process between the teams located at fencing and then the teams that are coming out of ruined reels. We've seen a handful of times now where Bacon and TK are, are two of the more prevalent players that have a tendency to try and rotate towards fencing, see if they can pick up any last minute battles, last minute search. Cold and Acorn though will make the first attempt. So they'll at least lock down. Society Medallion from Nisha. They've got the Vault Key card. They've got the Mythic Striker. Now all Cold and Acorn realistically need to do is prevent anyone else from forcing them into a solo situation. They know that they've got to worry about Empen and Mason lurking nearby. Back on over to Booga and Aviv here on the south portion of the map. The zone's going to favor them this time. And that's good be nice for them here as we know they're a team that plays well regardless of the situation but i think he's got enough shield potions yeah they just keep just keep dropping <laughs> out like what's going on Booga almost looking like a loot llama there for a second how much shield he had and shield man that's something clicks and epic could use but after confirming two eliminations to start off game number 10 pretty hot here Flix has been playing out of his mind, by the way, for day number two. But what I would like to see MDF is Epic matching that same pacing, matching that same standard that Clix has been operating with here today. He's the sixth time after all. Clix doesn't have any FNCS titles of his own. He wants to find the first one here today if possible. But it starts with Epic honestly needing to rise to the occasion because Clix has been holding things down uh, pretty heavily here today. Look at their HP. Three HP on Clix. Epic Whale, super damaged. We jump in with Pupper, uh, Paper and Muzz right now. We're getting active here. Edgy on the run. Where's Tavern? Likely in the elimination count of Paper. And he's just going for it, but the risk. He gets sent flying there by the crash pad. You have to assume that is basically mistakes were made. And you have to wonder, the sniper in hand, what all happened here? No scope needed. 
Oh my gosh, through the bush. Probably the last thing that Ed Edgy and Tavern would have expected. Because it's not usually a guarantee that Paper and Muzz will even have a, a Reaper Sniper available. Fencing fields, if you don't get it as floor loop, Muzz and Paper, we haven't seen them really go directly for the vault here at fencing. It's like they're down to try and, and find eliminations if possible, but they don't really seem all that invested as far as challenging for the vault is concerned. So the fact that Paper even has that sniper available to play with, that's likely going to make up the bulk of Muzz and Paper's surge strategy here in game number 10. The vault's going to start to open here. It's going to give the signal to the lobby, and I'm just keeping an eye on where those players are moving. It doesn't seem like they're going to be moving inwards right now. And Bach and Par is very interesting rotation they make. They go straight north up the beach, looking to finish things where they started with Chance and Aaron. And we kind of saw this before where they would quite confidently chase a team up the outskirts of the map, regardless of where it positioned them. It seems like that might have been the case here. And this, oh, and now that I think about it, Taka, remember last time how they caught that storm sickness? It, it was probably because something because like this fighting? or another in the storm, just like this, yup. This feels more personal than necessary. As oh Baka oh my won't get the gosh. better end of the exchange either. Aaron and wow. Chance, they were scot-free from Baka and Pars. Baka and Pars then chose to force the situation, not satisfied with that initial elimination they've been able to achieve to start things off here. And Aaron and Chance, the fact that they were able to turn that one around on Baka and Pars, a team that was in heavy contention for the top five, mind you, that's gonna be a very steep price to pay for Baka and Pars now, something that they might reflect on later here today. But first, Got to see how the rest of this match plays out. And for Peterbot and Pollo, another box fight over the cash. But Peterbot, Pollo, they've got Xavi and Neko on the back foot here. Xavi and Neko don't really seem all that confident in trying to take this engagement against the likes of Peterbot and Pollo, probably recognizing the fact that, hey, these guys are good with the way that they're holding them back inside these box fights. Well, things are looking pretty tough right now for everyone here on the outskirts is they're going to have to rotate right through Peterbot and Boyo. One thing I am noticing, though, is that Peterbot's about halfway through his material, so not the best spot to be in this early in the game. He's eyeing up, it seems like, Mirror up there. But on the other side, a lot of action still unfolding here. Aviv with the sniper in hand, and man, players... Gotta be careful not putting those walls up. It's just no other way to put it other than you kind of deserve the shot that comes in if you're that exposed and someone sneaks up on the side of you, by the way, and you don't recognize them coming. It's a pretty tough spot to be in. But at the same time, I almost can't fault Dasha Rooney for that one. It gets incredibly easy. Yeah, for even a, a second, a lapse in judgment, that's really all it takes. And Aviv, he's definitely been a, a very heavy player off of this Reaper Sniper whenever he has it available to him. Being supported by Buga as well. And now Buga Aviv, with that confirmation of limb, ample surge damage applied. So we're going to tap back in over to Clicks and Epic Whale's point of view. And max materials, very solid ammunition as far as Clicks' loadout is concerned. Six Flowberries in tow as well as a Grapple Blade. So mobility, definitely not an issue here. But it hardly ever is for Clicks and Epic, given that they drop over by Lavish Lair. Essentially guaranteed some of the best forms of mobility from that POI. Sniper still in hand here for Clicks right now. Two eliminations looking pretty nice right now. Ooh, Byla in the building here. Has to be careful. This is just so dangerous with this sniper. And this is why he has, again, some of the highest damage output that we've seen here amongst all players this weekend. 
Look at this. Death and Polarize sitting right up on top of Muzz and Paper's bases here. Oh, but they're going to rotate. They don't even want to remain near these teams here. Very interesting. Oh. What's your take on this? Well, currently, Death soaring through the skies without Polarize. Hopefully, Polarize is able to run that one back. And yeah, sure enough, will reunite with Death. Very fortunate that they were in a position where no one in the lobby had really started to build up. Area hasn't been super condensed just yet, but the fact that Death and Polarize did start to make the approach over towards where Vert and Yumi were boxed up. And to battle currently, next to the Ruin Reels, bound to draw some attention now with how many shots are being fired here. A lot of materials being spent as well. Death looking relatively low on his mat count, a lot lower than what you would want to be for the approaching point of a mid game. And of course, they're going to get the big sniper shot there. And one thing I just want to mention as we kind of go through this quick highlight here, Peterbot pushes up onto Redux and Day, who had full control here of the Rift oh, Island no. first, and then hits the most disgusting sniper shot. Peterbot is just a walking highlight reel this weekend at this rate if he wins the fncs grand finals this weekend he will have one of the craziest montages and reactions i think we, we've ever seen a, a duo put on so I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words i had a thought to finish about the previous duo it doesn't even matter anymore easy for things to slip the mind but re he's trying not to let Game number 10 slip away from him. Nice knock onto G Money. Will buy him a little bit of time here. Tries to go over the Medkin pot, but comes under pressure yet again. It's Cold and Acorn on the side of his box now. Diego plays G Money, recognizing the fact that there is now a third party introduced towards this box fight engagement. Ritual not revived just yet. Reed was trying to stick it, but oh, this is Cold crazy. Acorn, they just recognize the fact, no, this is a team that's operating now as a solo. They're going to chase down Reed, and for good reason, because Cold and Acorn, not only will it just be another six points towards the elimination count, but this is part of their competition for yeah. that first place position. And that's it. They know exactly that. Looking at the feed gives them all the information they need. They see the elimination come in. They see the name pop up, and they immediately alter their demeanor. They they change their entire, you know, uh, game plan right there, and they key down Re without even thinking twice about it. Their immediate competition is out, and look at how things are aligning right now for Acorn 2X and Cold. It's almost like the stars are definitely aligning for this duo here today. Crazy. At this rate, like, can Peterbot and Boyo stop them? I mean, Peterbot, like I mentioned, is a running highlight reel right now. But their play style, what they've been doing is a lot more volatile, right? Much more like a, like a tug of war. It's back and forth. They're explosive. They take risk where sometimes you might think it's not even needed. They're definitely different. Peterbot's mentality 99% of the time just seems to essentially boil down to, I think I'm better than you. Oh, yeah. And that's why we see Peterbot, Poyo so regularly engaging, even in situations where they don't need to. But to be fair to Peterbot and Poyo, day one of Grands, they definitely had some struggles with their surge strategy. It seems the way that they've chosen to try and, and deal with those issues is by making plays to Rift Island, because it's two games in a row now that we're seeing Peterbot Poyo actually choosing to go to the top of Rift Island. And sure, maybe it's just convenient based on its location in comparison to where they were already originally rotating. But at the same time, we've seen so many teams opting to stick around that Rift Island, whether to utilize the rifts for the easy rotates towards the next zone and, and later rotates at that. But regardless of the case, it, it's definitely helped Peterbot and Poyo more than what it's been a, a negative against them, even having to deal with a little bit more traffic on that island. 
I mean, I'm absolutely with you. I'm just looking at a little update here from Cold and Acorn, who are only 97 above the surge. So they're going to make a quick dash here to the new zone. One of the first teams to actually position up. And I find this to be super interesting that they want to play the bush here. Look at the standings. 37 points separating them from Peterbot and Boyo. And just a quick story about Peterbot. I'll never forget the fact that I came across him at the mall in Copenhagen at the Global Championships, and he had nothing but the worst things to say about all this EU competition. He is that confident when it comes down to what he's <laughs> capable of and what he thinks of the general player, not only, you know, wow. across the seas, but around him. He truly believes he is the best in the lobby at all times. Global Championship performance, yeah. You know, well, this is a different discussion for a different day. Sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're cold. But right now, we're seeing top tier Peter Bot. Yeah, we're also seeing top tier cold. I mean, that elimination that he just acquired from across the way onto Scissor. Tragic stuff there for Chimp. Not sure if Chimp is still up in the running, but losing Scissor definitely going to be a massive spoiler into his late game strategy. And Cold, even talking about it, ice in his veins, but this man's hands are on fire as he continues to rack up some of the shots. We saw them jump temporarily up to 300 above that damage threshold, and now yet again, another dip down, just 73 above this lobby, proving to maintain hyper activity as far as damage application is concerned. You can see even behind Acorn and Cold, Skater, Dalty. Acorn Cole got to be careful here, but more so Death and Polarizes. They're caught up in a box fight right now with Blake and Macklin. Curious to see how this is going to work out for them right now. They don't need to rush the fight by any means, but Mira and Cooper are likely to press the engagement here and pressure these walls. And look, the lobby starting to decide to turn against them as well. They have time to work with, but Polarize gets knocked there. He makes the wrong decision. Death makes the better move to go into the storm. Kanata and Aegis come in and take them down. We've seen Kanata jump into the feet a few times today. Unfortunately, they had a very, very short day one performance, which has kind of left them out of the conversation. They've managed to turn up and find better moments of success here today. Either way, though, more competition falls for Cold and Acorn. Players like Peterbot and Boyo, of course. Cold Acorn, bound to have been able to hear those shots coming out of the boxes behind them. They know Skater, Dalty, they're close. Probably getting the audio cues now from the Grapple Blades, trying to light Skater up out of the sky and pick him off before he can actually grapple his way above the hill. And now it's going to come down to Cold, to Acorn. 200 damage above but they still got to make sure that they rotate into a nice position here in zone. You've got Chubbs doing what he can to try and push Cold and Acorn away from him. Small tags into Cold, but he has more than enough shield to work with and more than enough protection here at Hazy Hillside where the zone has pull towards. Some good elevation now as Cold and Acorn try to hang more towards dead side of zone. I like this little outskirts spot that they're in. And yeah, just talking about Kanad and Ager's general performance. Look, they're at 317 points, right? Top 10 is around 400, which is one win. There's enough games in front of us to put Kanad and Ager's possibly up at the top. It just depends on how they perform. And look at this. They are just playing so exceptionally well in another set of eliminations. And in fact, if you just tally up how well Kanata and Aegis are playing right now, they're trending at around second. If, if it was just a one-day tournament today, they would be in second. That's just how good they're playing right now, and the points are showing it. But can they continue to replicate it throughout the course of these remaining matches here today, MDF? Because even if they pull it off in game number 10, they still have 11 and 12 to worry about. Although, with such a veteran team, in Kanata and Agers, that sort of experience could be the real difference maker in terms of how successfully they can match their consistency on the day. Look at this. Look at this base. This is looking like real Chapter 1 vibes right here. Booga and Aviv with a <laughs> double ramp out metal base. Back walls, no floors. Very, very reminiscent of early Fortnite day strategy right here. 
but I'm for it. I'm signed up for it. We haven't seen a team really find success this early in the high ground. In fact, even teams like Clicks and Epic Whale who are going for high ground in zone eight have stopped in this round here because all that they've gotten from it is a world of trouble and a lack of material after teams start to contest them. Meanwhile, on the low ground, though, five eliminations now for Cold and Acorn as they start to turn on the gas pedal here. Down goes Aaron and Chance, and Cold picks up a double elimination for his troubles here, Taco. It's the fact that Cold and Acorn, we saw how early on they made their way towards that less congested side of zone, and that positioning is going to be the real completion factor as far as finding those next couple of eliminations. But Booga, Aviv. They're out there. They weren't initially that invested into hype, but recognizing the fact that the zone had pulled relatively favorable for them at the start, now find themselves having to venture forward. They want to make sure that they maintain front side position on that zone, though. It's going to be tough, though, especially once the grapple comes into play. These teams on the low ground might have the opportunity to just look up. I like how Peter Bot and Boy are playing this right now. Front side staying far in ahead here, not looking to get into any enemy territory. Breaking all boxes, playing extremely safe. Just textbook. This is the one thing top tier pros do better is managing to stay and stick to the basics here for what's going to allow you to excel. And look at this, reading the zone perfectly. They get the essentially get the next pool here. Meanwhile, Aviv and Booga on high ground continuing to put this top-down pressure. Clicks and Epic Whale have also elevated themselves up to second height. Are they trying to go for a late-game take? It's looking like it could be a potential play there in the books. Don't count them out. But on your screen right now, you are watching the two greatest duos in the lobby right now pace ahead. But Peterbot and Pollo, these are all their pre-existing builds. They've been on the low ground, tarping their way out for so long. Muzz Paper, they got to be careful not to get themselves fully boxed here. But Peterbot, Pollo, Chance slips away. They're going to have to hold out just a little bit longer for their next opportunity there in the low ground. But Epic clicks. Epic forced into the med kit now. As he waits for Clicks to also look for an opportunity to get a little bit more HP regen. And Pen, though, oh might not gosh. have spotted out the Epic Wells there. Epic Well just going to finish off that oh. Night Kid and possibly look for an opportunity for elimination points onto Empen. Empen with no shield, by the way. He's going to try to grapple up through the high ground just to catapult himself to the front side of zone. But immediately, Booga senses that one out, takes Empen down. Oh, here they go. Acorn and Cold spring their way all the way up to the top and break the pills from underneath. Booga's feet there in Aviv and high ground is theirs, and they get to reconnect to the old builds. It couldn't work any better for them, but Booga lurking on the backside here, edging his way in, looking up. Aviv hasn't quite given it up. He didn't want to commit down low just yet, but Booga makes a call, and they have to, An Acorn. Cold come down now. This is their game to win at this point, but they will have to fight for it. Meanwhile, Epic Whale from the zone continuing to heal his way through it here. Amira and Cooper is still standing there. Taco, Cooper's in the zone. All Epic wants to do is keep a low profile. Every placement counts at this point for him and Clicks. But Poyo, oh my gosh. massive shot there onto Sphinx. That's gonna be an instant knock. Right under him. Can't find Pump though just yet. Instead, Poyo, he's gotta keep his eyes focused on what's directly in front of him, this mid ground. Not safe. It's a player yet. behind him. Oh, he doesn't even know there's a player behind him, but it doesn't matter. He finds Aviv here who gives up the high ground. The zone takes down Poya before he can earn more points, which is so unfortunate. Booga's already down. Aviv on the low ground here. A player falls in and also gets eliminated to the storm there. And just like that, Aviv gets granted with some mats, but it's Cold and Acorn who will surely take this win right now and break away with a monstrous lead here. And this is the kind of breakaway that might just be devastating to all of our other teams inside of that top five currently because Acorn and Cold, the way that they overshot Aviv and Booga to forcibly remove the high ground from them, we saw Aviv desperate to try and hold on, but it was just too much pressure. Acorn and Cold absolutely recognizing the fact, hey, 
High ground's distracted. And the fact that they could pounce upon it so quickly as well. Like the attempt though from Quanti. <laughs> Just not yeah, gonna be he, enough. You know, he, he really did try, but take a look here. Acorn does hit the shot there in the end. A nine elimination victory royale is just incredible especially when you are entering into the game in the lead right so now all of a sudden second place fell early third fell early and there's that's just all the room that they needed at that point to continue to really run with this but you know what i think we're gonna see some more top tenors start to shake it up now that, that might be the idea, but first of all, we got to see just how much of a lead Acorn and Cold were actually able to accrue in this last lobby MDF, and who better to tell it than Zeke, Vivid, and Kelly? Well, 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 this is what happens when Vivid decides to impart <laughs> some knowledge to a duo, you know, halfway through the competition. There, He's like, hey, you know, Acorn and Cold, you guys just fix a couple of these things You're like oh sorry about that vivid uh sorry about that we're, we're gonna do that right now and suddenly victory royale the very next game nine eliminations on these guys vivid i'm very proud of them and i'm very scared for everybody else because <laughs> these guys have now created a lead that all they have to do is hang on to and these could be the first duo going to global championships from na Oh, Zeke, you mean the first game on the day where they haven't had to like reboot or Cold hasn't been like a solo from like seven zone and had to try to clutch up some points? Oh, uh, yeah, it's the one that they go ahead and win. Kelly, what a high ground retake. I was even watching and I was like, wait, wh what are they going to do right now? They're going to go up. How Why are they going to go up? And then it's like it just ends up working. Buga and Aviv drop down a little bit. They notice that they go to the layers just above where Buga and Aviv just were. So smart out of Acorn and Cold. I definitely think that Buga and Aviv were separated there. We saw that they were just using wood build. So that's usually a pretty good indication that it's time to steal height. I'm just so happy that we got to see Acorn and Cold do that together. Like you were just saying, we always see them go solo. And that's typically when Cold stays on the low ground, which obviously if you're a solo player, you're not going to try and steal for height. But here we have it. And honestly, from the beginning, they were doing a pretty good job. They grabbed two eliminations pretty early on, although they were only 50 above Storm. And that was after taking down Reed, who was already pretty low. So even though grabbing eliminations, that's not an indication that they're not going to have issues with Storm Surge like we're seeing right here. However, with those cool long range shots from Cold, not an issue anymore. How comfortable as a player do you think Cold is right now, Zeke, when he can just have that mythic AR every single every game. game. Like that, that's such like an advantage that we kind of overlook sometimes. Oh, and there's that high ground. We take a look at that. The flow berry effect right there activated. The grapple blade just launching them all the way up to those old builds. That's, I guess that's free high ground. I didn't even see it. Acorn and Cold somehow did. And that was the game winning play. And why did this happen, friends? Something we've touched on a little bit. It's because they decided to go for the high ground later in the zones, Ooh. right? You're in 12th zone, but everybody else are fighting over these high ground in like 9th and 10th zones. But this is it. This is how you win the game right here. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's harder said than done. Like I said, I mean, the call, the awareness to go ahead and make this play. You need to have a lot of awareness, understand a lot. And Acorn, IGL, Cold, very experienced. They just got it. It was such a good run, and we knew that they could do it. We've seen Acorn and Cold do this so frequently. They got first place out of the most recent Cash Cup. They got first place in the first major from last year, so yeah. it seems like history might be repeating itself. Mm. Two games left to go here in NA. Let's look at these standings. Oh. Now, of course, no question. These guys are currently in first place, but by how oh, much? I'm sorry, that's a 100-point <laughs> lead these guys have. Okay, uh, listen, Peterbot, Pollo, okay, Buga, Aviv, guys, we need to band together, okay? We need to pull out all the stops. We need to slow these guys down. They have created a massive lead. Now, of course, because these guys are basically uncontested, they just have to keep doing what they're doing, and this lead could potentially get bigger. Yeah, 100%. They, of course, have a giant lead over second place. Second and third are very, very close, Kelly. 
But Booga and Aviv, after that great game right there, they have established a 66 point lead of their own over fourth place, who is in Reet and Ritual. With only two games left, not a lot of opportunities for some of these teams to catch back up to even top three at this point. Yeah, and unfortunately for Ritual and Reet, who were in a good position last game, they did go down a little early to Cold and Acorn, and that is the worst. If you're going to go down, you don't want to go down to the first place team. But. We still have two more games, two more opportunities for duos to be able to take on the Titans of Acorn and Cold or to just pull out a strategy that we haven't seen yet, potentially make it to the end game and grab a victory royale, but only time will tell. I mean, yeah. there's a big lead. I still think it's anybody's game though, Zeke. These 1.5 X points, 100 points for Victor Royale. There's a lot that can happen. Man, it could come down to that single Victor Royale could be the difference maker in sending a duo straight to the global championships two games left to go so let's get back into it with our casters it's the best taco and monster d face well that's right anything is possible you see the top 10 now taco a clear definitive breakaway from our i would say top three teams right now as we have a game 11 and 12 in front of us but a lot of new teams are jumping into the top 10 i would i count about three or four new squads now are on that front page but even with the lead that acorn and cold managed to develop for themselves after that last lobby performance mdf you can't ever you, you don't want to count your chicks before they hatch essentially right. they've put down what they needed to to get off on the right foot but at the same time a victor royale alone worth 100 points and if acorn and cold get elan relatively early on that could change the narrative just a little bit here as far as contention for first place is concerned but with the second to last lobby game number 11 on the horizon here and the f i think the main focus for not just acorn and corn but a lot of these teams in the lobby is going to be to maintain your composure you don't want to find yourself autopiloting as we head into match number 11 of the day That's right, you have to remain focused here for game number 11. Autopilot is not gonna be enough here, not against the sharpest minds Fortnite has to offer here. And I've made this analysis before, but I'm gonna say it again. This is a favorable bust likely for Bach and Pars who have really, really cemented themselves a solid top 10 footing. Even after yesterday's performance where they gave up a couple rounds, but get to watch it here. They go for something slightly different and it's gonna be get a weapon, take the launch pad, and then get a more favorable angle here to touch down before Chance and Aaron. I wouldn't be surprised if Baka touches down right on top of this player again here. And of course he does, but he misses the shot he was looking for and Pars gets melted out the sky from the duo. I believe that was looking inwards. Oh, this is a huge, huge ask right now of Baka and no he couldn't get the heels off in time and Baka and Pars had they really did have the strategy but the unforeseen additional duos ruined it all and that's the problem with their current drop even if they make it out against Chance and Aaron they still have to worry about Xavi and Neko taking advantage of shooting them from across the way so uh, definitely a very unfortunate demise there though for Baka and Pars. Keep in mind, in fact, how that last lobby went. Chance and Aaron, again, seeming to be the common denominator here because Baka and Pars, they wanted those eliminations so badly to start things off, but just find themselves being elimed instead by a completely separate team, just about giving that third party assistance there for Chance and Aaron. And something else kind of wanted to point out here in terms of Acorn and Cold, it's that notice they've been much less aggressive with going for that vault and yeah. taking out Nisha right away. Yeah, definitely. We're seeing some adjustment come into place, but you know, sometimes that lack of, or not lack of confidence, but instead the hesitancy can work against you when you start doing something a little too different, too passive. But first, let's wrap this fight up here with Dash and Seek who are Getting a bit active right now. We have, of course, J2 Prodigy and Bryce right now. And pretty solid swinging around here. We already know Chubbs here picked up that victory out alongside Bryce. Like we mentioned, this is 
for sure the team to look out for as far as big big up and comers for this year leading up to the global championships but right now shieldbreaker has to come out in desperation there it does end up connecting but it's not looking too good here see what we saw cold do in this situation right when his teammate was down he just gave it up all the way came back later but then you have like newer teams like bryson chubbs maybe not exactly having that type of discipline in their playbook just yet but we'll see as they continue to develop throughout the years congrats to dash and seek on winning the drop back on over to eom zone rise who are in and likely hungry to earn some points right now got a lot of ground to make up for fighting a battle very unique to just them in comparison to everyone else in this lobby but Yamzo and Rise, we know that they are capable of that level of greatness. They already got a taste from yesterday, having been in that first place position to start the day off. And you know that they're going to want to reclaim that spot and especially the title of being acts of champions, both seeking out their first one. But yeah, with the with the amount of points that Acorn and Cold have been able to build up in the meantime, it's certainly going to be a very difficult ask, but it's a journey that Yamzo and Rise are already committed to embarking upon. And now it's just the hopes of them get being able to play it out. See what they can make happen from their current situation. Yeah, the real anomaly for top five is the fact that Acorn and Cold have 200 or 100 points get, uh, uh, ahead of second and almost 200 across from everyone else. So unless something goes terribly wrong in one of these two games, then there's just not going to be an opportunity to close the distance there. But they are triple contested. So like we said, you literally cannot count them in as a winner just yet. This game, next game. Still triple contested. The real difference maker for Acorn and Cold is honestly just been the fact that they've been in positions both in games 10 and 9 where realistically they should not have been able to make it as far into an endgame as they did. But they just took full advantage of every opportunity and have found a way to minimize mistakes as much as possible here in day number two. Aside from the fact that they found themselves in a solo occasion, the successful reboots into recovering enough to then find ideal positioning in, in later games, that alone is definitely a testament to just how strong of a duo Acorn and Cold are. One thing I really like about Cold, I feel like he, for me personally, right, from like what I've gathered from his play style, he is exceptional with the shotgun. It reminds me of TSM's Commandment. Commandment used to go by the moniker, you know, the nickname, essentially uh, 200 just like Saf, 200 punk right like they were always putting that in their name because they were just that dangerous with it and cold man i know he doesn't he doesn't flex how good he is because he's very humble but he is good actions speak louder than words most of the time and cold's performance 99.9% .9 of the time it, it definitely and more than enough to back up that kind of statement. A little bit of trouble here, though. More towards the north side of the map. Far northeast, even. Noxie, Crisp, up against Asian Jeff, Oliver OG. No other teams in sight, though, so third party, probably least of their concerns, but both of these teams expending a good amount of materials. Seems as though Noxie and Crisp, they really want to commit towards this engagement given how much they've already opted to use up here. They're going to need that siphon materials out of Oliver OG or Asian Jeff and vice versa. Oliver OG, Asian Jeff. They probably want to force this engagement. Noxie already kind of hovering near that launch pad because 
As you can see, Asian Jeff eating a good amount of damage. Shield's not fully intact. Noxie now trying to see if he can creep around. Fine. A nice angle into the box of Oliver OG Asian Jeff. Gonna get the markers from where the pickaxe is coming through. Oliver OG Asian Jeff just trying to reclaim some of the space inside of this box fight. But again, if Noxie and Crisp, if they don't act soon and close this engagement off, it's gonna make things incredibly tough for them to try and challenge for a forecast tower or even a combat cache. Yeah, I like the discipline here though from Noxie and Chris to play the distance with all this extra AR ammunition that they have to use. But they're gonna disengage, get a couple tags, and they committed a lot of brick and wood there. Once they start digging into the metal, you can see things start to change. Jump over to Death and Polarize though, who jump in on Snacky and Possess, but a monstrous shot comes in return and Death now has to play for the zone save here to bring Polarize back into this game. That did not go the way they wanted it to. Surely is going to be a setback here. And unlike Cold and Acorn's save, they have to go to the nearest reboot, right? So very likely that other players are going to see what's happening here. There's just no time to waste. Kind of bold, though, by Polarize to just be fully exposed and just so convinced. Yeah, there's nobody looking in my direction with a sniper. I can definitely just look for my own search tags. So maybe a little bit more necessity towards proceeding with caution. Go a long way there for Polarize, but good looks by death. At least he's able to confirm the reboot. Now it's just about covering the ground to get towards that next zone have to expect that death and polarize are also going to have to be fighting the battle of getting their surge up given that they don't have anybody nearby so pretty good chance that they're going to be slightly below that surge damage threshold if they're not able to pick something up quick and that's the mentality here now from aviv and buga we've seen this team have more than one elimination even through the mid game into the late, but still a little bit of struggles, just barely managing to maintain over on that surge damage threshold. Surge just being the, the number one opponent currently for a lot of these teams in the mid game. Yeah, definitely. But Booga Bro is on something. Those devil ramps, <laughs> he just keeps pulling them <laughs> out. But hold up, we jump in here. Sphinx grapple hooking right into a bush that is housing two opponents. Lurking nearby, they couldn't get the finish or the box appears. Jagvir, TBC, LeBron. So <laughs> a little reset's gonna happen here. <laughs> Interested to see why they didn't commit to pushing into the box, but now it's just too late. They've given them way too much time here for Sphinx and Pump to go ahead and heal up. Everyone else is gonna be on the move. Look like Vanilla's in Convict. Or also local to that exchange could be part of the reason why LeBron and Jagvir opted to just pause for a second there instead of rushing right in. But still probably an engagement that a more experienced duo would have 100% opted to take. I mean, you get a shield break like that. It's a massive tag for Sphinx and Pump to have to worry about. About looking for another snipe shot. We've seen this happen time and time again, and he actually misses for once. But you see him line it up, though, you know? <laughs> you know something bad's coming to whoever's on the other side of the bullet. It makes you think. Definitely does. Here's Acorn and Cole back on the move right now, and of course, we're going to be continuously following these top teams right now as we're starting to situate ourselves up for what will be the finale here of the FNCS Grand Finals for NA. This is game 11. This is the day where points are worth 1.5x, placement even more. Eliminations matter even more. Your performance today is much more important. Take a look at the big rotate here from Rhea and Rich where they take the crash pad right through the middle of the map there. Don't get caught out for it. 
Even now, they're exposing themselves to Acorn and Cole, so they do have to be careful here. Yeah, Rich, we're not taking any chances. Creed dropping some walls. It's definitely the right play to make. Given that Reckless Railways is Ritual and Reed's backyard, since this is their initial starting point off drop, they're likely going to have a pretty good idea of what boxes were or weren't already existing on this side of the map. So, yeah, definitely some strong awareness coming out of Ritual. Spots out the little boxes that Acorn and Cold had set up based not too long ago. And we saw Acorn and Cold getting a little bit of pressure from behind, but it's actually just going to be Chance and Aaron on the receiving end. Easy elimination there for Cold to get onto Aaron. A little bit of material pickup as well. Shield potion. Gonna get Cold back to practically full shield. Only gonna be too short. That's not too bad though. Rise and Yams will get caught out. Unfortunately, they're trying to grapple hook away from a duo. They don't earn any points this game. It's trashy and threats who catch them on the rotate there. That's an unfortunate game number 11 for them. But now we jump in to Acorn and Code, who are on the hunt right here. We'll let it jump into an enemy box, potentially. There is no one here, but talk about bold, right? In order to fight, like looking for a battle when they have, you know, top 25 right around the corner, placement points, end game. Probably not content with the fact that they picked up an easy, quick elimination. They probably are feeling like they need a lot more damage. Clicks an epic. Definitely finding a little bit of damage here. It's going to be Yamzo's box that clicks. Oh. Forces his way into Yamzo. A little bit more preoccupied looking towards Epic Whale. As a solo in that position, won't have a chance. Can't shoot two different directions at once, unfortunately, there. So Yamzo and Rise have been elimed here in match number 11. Still try and, and battle it out though for maintaining inside of that top five. We'll have to see how game 12 goes for them. But as for Ritual and Reed, another team that has seemingly come up short here on day number two. They have a lot of ground to make up for. And this is a duo that Despite having uh, relatively open access for the forecast tower at Dumpenhausen, they have struggled with maintaining ideal positioning because they keep coming up short on their surge. Being uncontested, yes, yeah, sure, technically Sphinx and Pump land on the opposite end, not northern side of Reckless Railways, but that doesn't mean they're actually going to engage with Ritual or Re. That's part of the reason why we see Ritual and Re continuously trying to force these late game fights and sometimes when you're that desperate for surge yeah. you're making a lot of noise other teams bound to take notice and ritual and reed have really just been getting picked off more often than not by third party situations yeah that rotate right there is very interesting to watch play out because they know you know pretty much where the next zone's going you can see they're like dude we gotta get a mountain quick one of these two up on this side so that's already telling us a lot here back on over to peter Butterboy, boy you have zero eliminations but they are above the threshold so they've managed to at least stay active for the time being of this game a lot of players rotating with the grapple hook right behind them as well not to mention teams that are situated here in front of them so this is not going to be simple by any means and if you're peter button boy and you fall now i mean <laughs> You might as well kiss the FNTS Grand Finals opportunity goodbye at this rate because their competition is at 100 points ahead. Of course, with Acorn and Cold up there. No room for mistakes here at all. Clicks and Epic. Just barely managing to hang above that damage threshold. They're coming in with a... Bit of a late rotation, taking a good amount of damage as well from this two-tick storm. Polarized Death also finding themselves in a bit of a predicament here. This Polarized looking for a chance to get some of this Blowberry Fizz off. Only two ticks left 
Big shot, though, out of Polarize, but it's not going to be enough. Instead, that's going to be Tahi and Scented. Tragic stuff there for Death and Polarize. Keep in mind, Death, Tahi. Last time we saw those two, they were competing together at the Global Championship. Now, enemies here for Major 1 of the Grand Finals. That's right. That is a very history duo. Those kind of things are going to happen, you know? Like, even when you're... Even if you're Death and, and Polarized, you know, you're, you're playing so well, you're up at the top. I mean, this is Death's first time, I think, in a Grand Final setting where he's been able to obviously have a, have a chance at, like, even top three, right? With a pacing like this. So, you know, with time comes experience. But look at this. Six through ten are eliminated in this game already. Meaning that this runway is wide open right now for players like Clips and Epic Will here. Going to catch up. Aviva and Booga continue to get active. This is a team that we haven't talked about that could also be primed for a grand finals. And that'd be incredible for someone like Aviva to achieve under his belt. Booga already, of course, decorated all the way through and through. But Aviv starting to close in, and he's been playing so well. They just seem to complement each other's play style very, very well. As far as the top three is concerned, Aviv and Booga likely one of the only teams that are even in a position to try and challenge Acorn and Cold for that first place spot in the leaderboard. But it's all going to hinge upon whether or not Acorn and Cold even get taken out. Only one more duo needs to be eliminated before placement points become active. Just about. At the same time, though, Cold having at least six points from that elimination he acquired earlier on. Paper Muzz, though, from fencing fields all the way over to classy courts. It's probably the last thing that Cold and Acorn expected to see. But Paper Muzz having already found a slightly better spot. Cold Acorn still trying to make their way across this body of water here. A couple of tags being eight up. But now it's the immediate pressure from Golden and Ozone that could pose more of a problem here. Cold and Acorn aren't careful. I'm not worried. They're in first place. I'm not worried. They got this. All right. Everyone around them, they got this. Unless it's Rhea Ritual. We're getting really close now. <laughs> it's going to get a little dangerous here. As the water starts to heat up. Can they handle the pressure? But no. It's a little too much for Reed who gets taken down into a box and the edit comes in. And now Ritual has to play this one out by himself. This Close, is their though. chance to do something big. Ritual jumps in and gets mounted by threats. Clicks gets knocked in the feet as well. Are all of the competition falling here and now is the question. But Epic Whale fends off a monster shot there. Gives him time to save Clicks. And they got to at least break into like 520, 530, 540 if they want a chance in the last game to potentially be the grand finals winners here. Aviv and Booger are doing just that. Pushing everyone back now. Look, 25th placement, that's three points. Every placement above that only continues to build up. Epic was asking him to step it up earlier on the day. It seems he's done just that. Definitely a clutch moment for him to bring clicks back into the lobby, finds that revive after getting a successful elimination, putting more pressure onto the rest of the lobby to also stay upright here. Peterbot, Foyo, they recognize the fact, first place, pulling ever so much further away from us. They know they need a big match here if they want to keep in contention with Acorn and Cold. Same story though for Aviv and Booga. As they continue to build, one more elimination upon the next. It's close enough for Will versus Peterbot and Boyo here. But Duke comes in from the flank and just deletes Peterbot while his guard was let down. And now Boyo has to play this out by himself, but then it comes through. And it is Dukes who gets finished off there. So close. He almost 2v1'd him, but clicks an epic whale time it perfectly. And just like that, down goes Peterbot in the 600 point threshold range. So it's still a good game for them, but it's not gonna be enough as Acorn and Cold 
start marching their way to 700. Clicks and Epic now have a chance to jump up into second. This is crazy to think that Cold and Acorn are just looking like a completely different duo separate from what and the type of performance they put in during the semifinals. Like their finals performance so far has been very, very solid, rock solid. And the news just keeps getting better still because Booga being not now fully limbed. You can imagine that the feed probably retailing that information towards Acorn and Cold. Zaviv doing everything he can, grapple blading, trying to stay moving along Acorn's with this knocked. zone. I think Acorn just got knocked. Yup, Cold is by himself now. This is huge. He's only at 702 points. If Cold falls now, I mean, that's gonna be the, the lead given away, but no, he's still fighting for it. And this is what we've seen Cold do a lot this weekend. Cold has literally backpacked Acorn a couple of times this weekend already, but most importantly, when it mattered on Sunday, right here, right now, he continues to do it. And look at this, a little bit of Fortnite favor. The zone bounces back towards a uh, Cold, so he has a little bit more time here to rotate now with the lead, but there's a team on his tail. Keep in mind, Aviv, he's got the exact same intentions as Cold. He knows that he can't afford to go down just yet. Doesn't want to let first place slip that much further away from where Aviv and Buga currently sit in the standings. Aviv doing everything in his power, going to opt to drop towards that low ground, even though it's going to be a more congested side of the zone. The doesn't have any mats, doesn't have any builds. For take this box fight instead but two versus one and two is better than one aviv has fallen now muzz and paper on the rise that's it cold's immediate competition is down and out epic whale gets knocked there like this is looking better and better right now for cold and acorns last game clicks gets taken out as well now he is just leading here and look who's alive kanata and agers have they just had a better day one they would surely be top three right now. Just incredible to see Kanata and Agers also having a little bit of a, a moment for themselves. I've seen them continuously jump into the feed, but look at Code Gold continuing the onslaught here. He falls inside the top eight. Another top 10 performance for them. Seek and Dash turning online as well. Very consistent here today. And Seek and Dash, they have the chance to completely bamboozle the entirety of the lobby, given how many points they'd already jumped up from that last match. But Chris, Noxie, they also want to find a victory royale on the day, if possible, to seriously put them into contention for threatening that top five of the leaderboard. They could start here. One more pickup onto Zooks. Dash of Rooney fully exposed. Noxie gonna light him up as a punishment for it. Crisp has both of the medkits though. Between himself and Noxie, chop really quick. Dasha Rooney not gonna be able to close it out. Crisp and Noxie, they hold on to, I think we can still call that somewhat of a high ground, but more importantly of all, the fact that they managed to maintain their position over the rest of the lobby is ultimately what led to them finding that final elimination onto Dasha Rooney, but still a really deep run out of Seek in Dasha Rooney. Bound to have built up a good amount of points there. They were positioned best by far. I mean, they had the high ground. They didn't overcommit too much, and they had just enough material to make it through the end game there, and even farming any opportunity that they had right there. And look at this, it comes back towards the Rift Island, so this could have gotten real spooky, real different, real quick. But for Noxie and Chris, congratulations to them. They take a grand finals victory royale here in game number 11. And you really, really like to see that because that's gonna put them up in the 500 point threshold closer to top five right there's a lot of prizing that we're seeing become available right now as you continue to work your way up through this top 10. yeah there is definitely some pretty drastic jumps amongst even the placements within the top 10 but you know who else found themselves inside of that top 10 acorn we saw excuse me cold we yep. saw him make his placement run all that much further extended for acorn and cold so their spot up on the leaderboard, it's got to be feeling awfully comfortable right now. But with one match left to go, I want to get it back over to Zeke, Vivid, and Kelly to let us know everything that actually took place in game number 11.
I feel like I've just blinked and I've missed the competition. We just, I started the day and now here we are in the final one of major number one. And we are right here about to crown FNCS champions. I also just cannot believe this last game. It feels like the games of it have gotten more and more chaotic as these have kind of gone on. It started like a really explosive, really fun game. And then suddenly here we are. Teams falling, solos left alive, and then Noxie and Crips taking away a victory royale. And as Monster called out because of that VR, suddenly these guys are finding themselves in top five. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, Noxie and Chris coming into the day 11th place into that game, specifically 12th. So they've been kind of tinkering around top 10 this entire time and coming out with a victory royale in game number 11. That is how you put yourself in contention for some of these larger prizes. Shout out for them for clutching up right there. 11 eliminations as well. That's huge. Yeah, huge performance there. Definitely going to shoot them up the leaderboard. And it, regardless of getting first or not, you definitely want to be higher up on the leaderboard because that's where more money is and more opportunity, of course. Landing on Coastal Comms, Noxie and Crisp have been doing a pretty good job even back in day one, but not breaking into our top 10. Obviously, we're not going to see them as much, but might be looking at another success from them in the final game of the day. I can't believe we're already here, Zeke. I know. I, again, it's like these games have just been wild and I wish we could just play another six, but this is it. One left to go. Let's set the stage with the standings. Who leads the pack? Has something changed? I no, it hasn't. No. Acorn and Cold only continue to develop their lead, but Vivid, now that we kind of have this opportunity to say, okay, well, Breaker and Cold, if they just held on, they repeat, they walk away champions, okay? So I want to take a step back. I want to look at everybody else. Because where <laughs> did Booga and Aviv come from? What? Hey, what? listen. Where? They've been playing around with top 10 throughout the entire competition. And to see them in second place, really no surprise. We are in for one heck of a final game. I mean, look at that. That performance from Noxie and Chris all the way in game number 11. Still potential for them to jump up eight places. That just tells stories about how this leaderboard can really change with just this one last game, Kelly. So everybody yeah. on this leaderboard, if they want to hold on to these spots, they really do have to perform. And I mean, Buga and Aviv were in sixth place after day one. They, they did absolutely phenomenal. We saw them get a second place today. And honestly, I think that last game, it was less of what is Buga and Aviv doing right and more of Peterbot and Poyo going down a little early, Clicks and Epic Whale going down a little early, Re and Ritual going down a little early. And I think even at the halfway point, Vivid, we saw that six through 10th was gone. Yep. So that definitely was kind of the shakeup game I expected earlier on. But to see Aviv have the solo run right here, he, he tried as hard as he could, but when you have so much going on around you, there's only so much you can do. Absolutely, okay. This is it, last game of the day. What do we wanna see? What is it that we wanna see happen with this final opportunity? What can duos do? Is there a do you guys have eyes on that you're like, I just wanna see them have the game of their career right here, right now, talk to me. Um, yeah, honestly, there is a duo that I've been kind of eyeing throughout day number two, and we haven't really had an opportunity to talk about them. They ended day number one in 30th place after being surprise contested. It's going to be none other than Kanada and Aegis. I feel like we've seen them in almost every single endgame in day number two. They haven't really been able to define themselves, you know, getting into like the top three where we're kind of used to seeing them. But right now they're in 12th place and starting the day in 30th and already being at 12th place. Hey, listen, there is a lot of opportunity for them to jump maybe even into that top five. I'm interested in the story between Aviv and Buga and Peter Bai and Poyo. I, I think at this yeah. point, it's a 140 almost point lead between first and second place. And we saw Buga get a second place in the most recent major, which was chapter four, major three. And we know that there's history between Buga and Peter Bot. So I'm excited to see these two kind of battle it out and who's going to be able to claim second. Yeah, really quickly, I wanted to bring up the, uh, the placements here to see what do players will walk away in what placements how much money are we talking for Buga and Aviv to go head to head with Peterbot and Poyo look at the difference $20,000 and here they are fighting for that $20,000 a piece but even just keep in mind this last game suddenly jumping up 12 placements right from 11th to 15th up to the top five 
That's insane. So whatever happens in this next game, Fortnite fam, y'all cheer on all of these duos, okay? Because this is the final game of the NAFNCS. After this, we crown champions. We, we claim spots on the battle bus going to the globals. It's all to play for right here, right now. One final ride. Let's get into it. Taco, MDF, over to you. Woo! We definitely have a lot to look forward to here as we're gearing up for the FNCS Grand Finals Champion. We're going to find out here shortly. Taco, I mean, let's get some early predictions. Do you think Acorn and Cold are going to hold it? It would be very difficult. I think it's more difficult for Acorn and Cold to lose it than what it would be for them to essentially hold on to this lead at this point. Something that Alden was so kind to point out. Prodigy Analytics on Twitter, for those of you that might not be aware, Acorn and Cold are just one of two teams, Sphinx and Pump being the other, that haven't had a single zero-point game. So Dang. if you're hinging on Acorn and Cold making a mistake, you're going to be waiting a while because the few mistakes that have taken place, they've been able to double back on and overcome impressive stuff all around certainly what you would expect the consistency to be of an axa champion holder but game 12 is here it's ready to determine who's actually going to win well here we have it game number 12 of the grand finals is going to kick off and we'll see if acorn and cold end up regretting the fact that that npc took six points from them when we started the day or not essentially it's a vive booga peter by and Pollo's game to try to fight for and again we already know the triple contested first place leaders coming out of game 11 acorn and cold still have a lot to fight for and judging by the map judging by the way the zone's playing out they're still very much in the same area with the same situation and issues arising all around them but take a look here we're gonna start things off with a new perspective here of Tahi, who's just getting situated here at the Classy Courts as other players are starting to take to the world right now. We already know that last game didn't go well for Baka and Pars, who got unfortunately taken out by a third party and then finished off by Chance and Aaron here, but this is what we wanted to see from them last game. And had they just won that last game, it makes you wonder that they beat up in the top three conversation right now. Right now, it's just about even trying to break into top five for Baka and Pars. Chance, Aaron, as per usual, being that initial engagement that Baka and Pars are going to embark upon. Pars getting credit for one elimination so far. But as far as adaptations are concerned, one that would be nice is if Baka and Pars choose not to lose focus and chase out the remaining teammate between Chance and Aaron as we've already seen one time how detrimental that has been towards their overall gameplay of the day. And looking back here now at fencing fields, Acorn Cold, our current leading team of this Grands and a little bit curious, MDF, because with EU, we saw Malibuka Mustache. They won, sure, but guess where they won from? And if your right. guess isn't Fencing Fields, <laughs> <laughs> it might be a, a little bit more than meets the eye about this POI. And have to believe that it starts with that mythic striker. That weapon, too good for its own right, but well, also that... We, we did say that yesterday, too, when we were just looking at Muzzin Paper's dominant performance. They were coming out the gate, and one of the breakdowns on the desk was like, hey, guys, I think fencing fields. Like, there's just something up here. Like, everyone's playing so well out of this drop. I don't know really if it's good. centered or if it's just the weapons, like you mentioned, but there is definitely something, something nice in the water over there, for sure. Yeah, different kind of scene as well for... Aviv and Buga entirely. These Muzz Paper actually find themselves in a little bit of a predicament here. They made their usual rotation over to Ruined Reels, but TK Bacon to actually rise. Ooh. Yamzo also lurking, but Bacon especially trying to piece up Paper. Paper not going to be able to buy enough space. He will fall. So Muzz Paper 
E limbed. And now Rise Yamzo. So many shieldfish. Rise and Yamzo, they are just out for whoever. They want every elimination they can find. Yeah, I think this is just the last hurrah right now for Yamzo and Rise. We already know Yamzo taking things a little tough right now. So for him, it's just a matter of finishing the day off strong, exiting on a, on a solid performance. And, and honestly, just hope he keeps his head up alongside Rise right here. Yeah, regardless of standings, Yamzo and Rise definitely solidifying themselves as number one in the hearts of many. Hoping for the best for them in this final lobby, but they are certainly not the only team trying to make their last stand here. It's Noxy and Crisp doing what they can up against the likes of Freeze and Suscript. Suscript having already been eliminated, now it's down to just Freeze to keep his teammates' final lobby hopes alive. Doing his best to juke around. Edit's coming every which direction. But again, Crisp, Noxie closing in. Chris gonna be able to hold off the side ramp position. And it's just too much pressure. Super clean with it. Just take a look. Just making it look like a creative game right here. Sizes him up, boxes him up, cones him in. No problem. Nice and easy. Must be playing Zone Wars. No doubt. <laughs> Take a look at Peter Bot and Boya right now, who have to do, I don't know, a lot? If they want to start closing <laughs> the cap. <laughs> Considering that no one landed on Acorn and Cold just tells us that, my opinion, you're playing for top three. You have to do something incredibly, incredibly well to outperform Acorn and Cold with this amount of, you know, points separating the two. But you also can't get too distracted because Peterbot Pollo, they know that it's within their grasp for that first place standing. They need mm -hmm. a phenomenal final match. And honestly, for Acorn and Cole to suffer a slightly earlier departure from this lobby, boy, Peterbot is slamming shots like oh that. My gosh. Reaper Sniper, someone <laughs> needs to get this man in check. Because Peterbot being an absolute menace to the lobby all day today with some of the shots that he's managed to build up here I mean, what what more do you want he's got the he's got the aim he's got this forecast tower so he's got the zone that's it you just can't stop him he's an unstoppable unmovable force no doubt it's so entertaining to watch play and compete at a high level as is Vuga and Aviv man these guys have continued to you know just kind of fly under the radar stay consistent nothing too flashy but we're watching you know all the pizzazz of some of the other players like re and ritual clicks and epic whale man Buga and Aviv are just coasting right along the top of the standings here straight up to the money let's look at it I'm telling you the flash is definitely there Clicks is a, a special one indeed but epic whale gets punished in the fight here so it seems like day must have Turned and burned him with that auto shotgun, and I'm surprised Clicks doesn't finish the battle yet, but it just shows you how much more important it is to go for the distance. It's the placements. Clicks knows. Mm -hmm. They're teeter tottering in that fifth place position. And something I was going to mention earlier when we saw Peterbot with the god tier snipe. It's that top five, especially second through fifth place, they are all very much within overlap range of each other. And Clicks, main reason why he's willing to disengage against Redux and Day is because if even for a moment he slipped up while trying to initially recover Epic's reboot card, he knew that he was going to just find his tournament life. Uh -oh. It was gone. It was over. But now, Skittles, trashy. They spotted out a potential solo here. Clicks trying to take the zip line to get away. He has the grapple blade as well. Quick with the wall. And it's going to be just enough. He's trying to create as much space as possible right now, but he has been forced to the far northwest side of the map. Just completely out here on his own, no man's land. And without a soul in sight, Clicks has so much of a journey set in front of him now as he looks to get that reboot ban opportunity, bring Epic back into this match and try and complete lobby number 12 as a team. 
this lobby's cutting down really fast. Take a look here as we're in 70 player territory right now. Last game of the evening. Everyone's trying to do their best to make a hero's effort here to climb up the standings. And what you're going to notice right now is that, you know, battles are going to be worth quite literally in some instances, thousands of dollars and others, tens of thousands of dollars. Because once you start ranking your way up that top 10, everything starts to change. But see, for clicks and Epic, well, though, that box fight up against Day and Redux, that has ultimately dictated how this final lobby is going to go for this team because it's going to be just so... I don't want to say impossible, but definitely a, a lot more problematic because even if Clix gets that reboot van, again, in an Epic Whale, they weren't really able to acquire that much surge damage initially. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about just we just saw acorn and cold for a second there They're in a low ground position trying to stay out of the line of sights of other players and they have not fought in the early game I am extremely concerned about their Adjustment to slowing down their pacing right now and whether or not they're even gonna have enough damage Granted the lobby's moving pretty quickly as the player count starts to cut down so it might just be the best play for the situation but Mixing it up now could change everything for them this lobby is moving so fast, though, if you compare it to every other one so far today. I mean, the fact that we are down to 68 players, MDF, and we're just about to enter zone four, by the way. We might find this lobby concluding before we even reach the final zone. Vegan Booga right now, just trying to get situated here. Zone's going to start to come in, and again, this is a team that's no strangers to playing the late side of the timer as far as the early zones are concerned, and for the first time now, we're really tuning in with seeing the... essentially what makes this duo successful, but right now, they do have a team that's waiting here just at the top. They're going to catch this sound cue as soon as Booga or Vive grapple hooks over. But no, I actually haven't seen them turn around. They have no idea <laughs> that they're above them and never really know how close danger can be. We know Booga loves to do these elaborate dead side rotations, but going to the literal peak of this mountain just to take advantage of the launch pad, it is a, a bit of a stretch there for, for Booga and Aviv. And as to whether or not they'll be able to collect enough surge damage, but good chance to check in, see how Clix and Epic Whale are faring since Clix's recovery mission went underway. And with Epic now being back in the game, it's just Baka and Pars who are going to be the next hurdle here for Clix and Epic. This is likely an engagement that Clix wants to try and take advantage of, but the issue is just doesn't have enough white HP. But he's got a sniper. He's got a sniper, and this is everything that could set him set him up for success right now. If Clix hits the snipe, honestly, I'll just have to bring back the mug of the day and do bots. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting it on the line at this point. I believe. Oh, there's a team behind him. Oh my gosh. I'm genuinely scared for a second. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Map. And someone just goes rolling up, pre-fires the bush there. Clicks must be thinking the same thing. Adrenaline is peaking right now. It's almost looking like a little bit of panic. Oh yeah, he's pretty frazzled right now. Clicks won't be able to do a whole lot here out in the water. Just hoping that he doesn't turn. It's essentially fishing bait, but... Team, team, team just left too. Another play over there. They are getting sandwiched oh, in x Mew. Ball. They know they've got the advantage. They can tell just from the way that Clix is positioning himself, just from the way that he's disengaging, that this is a, a solo or a duo that is struggling super heavily. And they're going to try to pin him down. 
Clues is really gonna have to depend on Epic if he wants to make it out of that one alive. Look what's happening here. So many big pots here to work with. Wouldn't be surprised if Rich One Re go for some more bold exchanges here. If they can afford to do so right now. And maybe that's part of the adjustment that they made, right? As they started gearing up. Fighting for these Rift Islands, fighting for some of these weapon cash. I mean, it makes all the difference once you have that many extra heals to work with. Acorn and Cold <laughs> ever so close nearby. And like we said, they position themselves in this kind of low ground area. I was concerned with how much damage did they manage to find? And maybe, maybe it was enough because Acorn has a sniper, right? That definitely determines and, and changes things a lot. Usually, if at least one player out of the duo has that sniper, yeah, you can expect them to be taking on the bulk of that responsibility for managing the surge strategy and getting that damage threshold up to an ample amount, so that way you can just operate prioritizing solely on positioning. And that does seem to be the case for Acorn and Cold. They seem a little bit too, a little bit too calm, a little bit too relaxed. When you think about how fast-paced this lobby has been, and for Acorn and Cole to just kind of be sitting there. It's almost like watching the eye of the storm, essentially. And clicks in Epic. This is Oliver OG, Asian Jeff now. One team after the next for these two. Important fight for them, though, to find a refresh here. They need the mats. They need the heals. They, they could truly do with a big, big pickup right now. And I'm just waiting for the sniper tag from Clicks to come through and set things up. And he finds it right here. It's not the headshot he wanted, but the body tags would be more than enough. Just a wall short right there would have been the difference of him fully committing in. And Epic Will's close and personal right now. But the way that Clicks started to push Golden and Ozone inwards for a moment there, it almost looked as if. Golden and Ozone, we're going to get sandwiched between Clicks, Epic, and Asian Jeff, Oliver OG, but instead, Oliver OG, Asian Jeff, a little bit too separated from this current engagement. Now it could be potentially Xpawn Mew. Have to keep in mind, they caught eyes of Clicks way over yonder when, when Clicks was still even making this initial rotation towards Classy Course. The fact that they followed him all the way here yeah. indicates that Xpawn Mew. They also want elimination points, or at the very least, surge damage. What's insane is all those teams up there, minus Jeff and Oliver, have like either no shield, half shield, coming out the zone, look like they're in shambles. Like everyone on that dead side rotate is having a pretty tough game right now. And I talked about Acorn and Cold having this problem, potentially with the damage that they've allocated to this game, and they are definitely below, but the monstrous shot that I have to assume is some ridiculous snipe by Acorn, set them up to get a down body right here, but no, actually, never mind. No elimination credit. They might have just been gifted a downed body from someone else, and they find the tags that they need off of that. You know, sometimes you just need a little bit of luck on your side. A lot of skill, but a little bit of luck. Almost feels like destiny at this point for Cold and Acorn, but... They still want to take their fate into their own hands, still trying to have control over things. Peterbot, there's one thing that's been consistent with this band of day. It is the <laughs> headshot snipes we find where that supply drop came from. Dash of Rooney falling from the sky. Just the nastiest snipes on the day here from Peterbot. It's just, what do you say? It's so good. Oh, the pre-fire through the wall, you love to see it. Look, with the sniper in hand, Peter Bot is definitely in his prime right now. It just seems like things are lining up for him this season. And you know what? I, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Let's talk about an insane story that's coming together right now. Clicks and Epic Whale putting together this game right here when just against all odds, Clicks have to play for the ridiculous save onto Epic Whale. And then absolute clutch disengages just to be in the run right now so impressive clicks and epic will have been so impressive this season they have to be proud of their performance regardless of what end results come out of it but 
I'm sure they wouldn't be too mad with a top three or something. Wow. Look at the X pawn tag right there. Beautiful sniper shot from Clicks. Look, it might not be a headshot, but body shots still count. Epic as well. Going to take full advantage of this campfire. Very fortunate one as well because Epic, Clicks, they don't have any white heels of their own. So depending on the map and what it naturally provides, it can go a long way sometimes. Aviv and Booga, though. Been a minute since we checked in to see how things have been shaping up for these two. In the final lobby of Grands. Crisp and Noxy, though. If Epic and Clicks saw that knock just now, probably hoping that Crisp won't actually be able to get the revive off. And it is going to be an unsuccessful attempt here. Ex pawn Mew, they're going to force themselves into the box. So Crisp and Noxy now being knocked out of the count. This could be the chance here for Clicks and Epic to find themselves with a potential top four, if not top three finish, depending on how things go for Aviv and Booga. Yeah, definitely. And Clicks and Epic had a good amount of points ahead of their sixth place, you know, competitors. So this is a this is a top four lining up right now for Clicks and Epic. Well, they can just start earning some placement points for Aviv and Booga, though. They have to turn up the eliminations now if they want to stay on pace with Peterbot and Boyo. You know, placing points aside because look at how light the lobby is right now. You have to assume performance is probably feeling pretty solid, but more importantly, this game's ending really quickly and the placing points are just around the corner, right? So that means the Elims are going to start to run light. Cold is going to find elimination in the feed there onto Tahi. So things are starting to add up right now for even Acorn and Cold. Reading Ritual, though, hoping that they can find some of the same gift exchanges that Acorn and Cold have stumbled upon here today. But Cold, whether it's a supply drop via Peterbot, finding a snipe onto Dash of Rooney, or just taking advantage of Scented and Tahi being pressured inside of their box to expose there on the side. Cold making quick work of Tahi. Big elimination as well to just continue building up their gap between first and second place. Golden Acorn dead center right now as well. And there it is. Finally, one of those eliminations that, you know, Clicks really needed to kind of get him in the situation to have some material. Not the greatest amount of, from the pickup. So we're just going to have to run this back and see exactly who it was that he took out. Oh, it's going to be Rise here. He finds with a big tag there. Drops him down likely into this box here shortly after. There it is. The shock and the catch him. And then the full finish there. Tough stuff for Yamzo and Rise, but again, their struggles today have been so unique and different in comparison to a lot of these other teams battling it out. Regardless of where Yamzo and Rise end up in the final leaderboard, they are absolute warriors for their performance here today. As now Peterbot Poyo. They're actually trying to be the warriors of the low ground. Decent amount of tarp space already built out here. Good amount of builds still remain as well. And with no real high ground having been established just yet, it's all going to be about who can actually take control of front side of zone. The vegan booger right now. Staying active. Like you said, in control of zone here. But the material looking a little light. Heels, a little worse for wears. Could we be seeing Booga and Aviv come short right now as the team jumps in? It's Oliver OG, it's Jeff. But this might be a best case scenario. If they can win, of course, because they get delivered. Everything that Oliver and Jeff have to offer them, but Aviv gets knocked. Booga unfortunately slips off the side and the pressure from other players start to come in and very, very skilled disengage, though. He drops straight down here and will likely be able to save his teammate, but no, those teams want more. And they are down and out. This is prime time runway right now for Boyo and Peterbot, but more importantly, Clicks and Epic Whale have more room to potentially jump up to top three now as Cold and Acorn seemingly are uncatchable. And not only that, 
but for Klix and Epic Will, Klix's former highest performance was all the way back. Chapter three, season three, he got a fourth place finish with Dukes. You know he wants third or higher here on the day with Buddha and Aviv no longer being in that lobby. It's a very real again. possibility. High ground, but can they maintain it? That has been their struggle crazy. whenever they go for the high overtakes. Getting some good pressure now into secondary height is clicks. Epic, they need to maintain their awareness though when they're controlling that high ground. Peter Bot doing an excellent job to find a knock of his own onto LeBron James. And now grappling, trying to maintain pace with the rest of the lobby, trying not to get focused out either. And I just want to say if all games are going to go for high ground, the last one when no one or everyone has everything to gain, nothing to lose essentially, is this the end of the day? It's so incredibly risky. Look at Peterbot, look at Boyo. They're moving up for a reason right now. And when you give them enough time, when there's not enough pressure and they can size up your position, it's all or nothing. Even Oliver OG decides to try to go for it. And I think Clicks and Epic are really taking a bold, bold move right here. And they will need a refresher if they want to maintain this because other teams are going to start coming up here soon. They've got their eyes set currently Huge on Oliver. One. Big pickup find as well. That material gonna be much needed. Re Ritual all the while on the low ground. Nero, it's Cooper. They're gonna be eliminated. Cold Acorn now proving to be another set of foes here. Oh but they my just gosh. claim Chubbs instead. Bryce possibly still running around as a solo. Poyo though, on the other hand, he is definitely a solo here. No Peterbot. Higher still going. taken out. Catching points, making noise here. Boyo is not giving up. He wants to hold this positioning for as long as possible right now. Epic Whale gets broken off of the high ground, though. Cold and Acorn are trying to make a superstar podium finish here with the win if they can help it. But Boyo still in this, too, holding on as he takes down Bryce right now. There is so much unfolding here. Re gets hurt big time here. And he gets... Traded with Ritual there too. Vanilla's gonna finish off Reap. Boy is gonna swing his way through. Top five now. Eight players remaining. Threats being one of them. Poyo trying to stay incognito. But oh again, take gosh. a look. Clicks epic in the ultimate high ground currently. Eight point cold, secondary height. Could no potentially way. be looking to make a play. Poyo. Just slithering on by. Nobody recognizing the fact that this solo was located in the boxes directly underneath them. Can hear all that foot traffic moving around him, doing his best to stay undiscovered. Epic gets a big chunk out of Cold, but it's going to be Cold who turns things around. Double elimination here onto Clicks and Epic Whale. Oh, and another one. And now it's Duke and Threats on the low ground here. Acorn and Cold have fought their way all the way up to first place, and it doesn't matter how you cut it, they will be your grand finals champions here, but can they close it out on a win? They sure can, a huge tag there, of course. Cole's gonna hit it back to back, and they do it again here. A year later, from chapter four to chapter five, we have winners. Stole the words right out of my mouth there, MDF. The fact that Acorn and Cold are able to replicate their success from the very first major of Chapter 4, and now here in Chapter 5, starting things off with a bang. Just incredible. Very rarely do you see your first place team ride it into a victory royale for an undisputable championship victory that is the way you close out a game of Fortnite. and if we thought they had a lackluster performance here or there they were barely holding on well guess what they did it unarguably in clean fashion congratulations to acorn and cold as they do it again you know man city's happy with their most recent signing you know dignitas is gonna celebrate today as they have another championship win under their belt just incredible yeah, but also have to point out the fact that, yes, Acorn and Cold, they won it in Chapter 4, Major 1 as well. But if you think about what happened with EU, Mustache also, he won Chapter 4, That's Season right. 1 with Taysen. He also found his Victory Royale, his Axe of Champions lift yet again. So really cool stuff between EU and NA. Always love seeing the, the overlap in that storyline.
Well, we've seen a lot here today. And with that, for myself, Monster D Face, and of course, the best taco, we thank you guys for watching at home. We got to see the standing, so there's just so much on the line. So we're going to send on over to Des to start wrapping us up. Thank you so much, the best taco and Monster D Face. Amazing cast this weekend. Wow. The competition comes to a close. We can definitively, definitively say Acorn and Cold have walked away your major one champions, which also means they have claimed the first spot going to the global championships later this year. The double whammy acts of champions held high and a confirmed spot. Now it's all about later on this year. The focus, can they come back and win the global championship? How in the world is this duo so consistent? Let's look at their placements from last year. First, sixth, sixth, seventh at Globals, and then starting off this year with a first place. How is Crazy. that even a real stat line? Kelly, this duo, even sometimes, sometimes solo performances individually, they are just so good on an entire another level. And then to do it with a victory lap, to win the last I game, to it. stand on business, what they absolutely deserve the acts of champions the money and then of course the spot in the global championships later this year and i mean i heard you and levin talking about it at the most <laughs> recent drop, drop spot show you guys both said that acorn and cold <sighs> were going to win the whole thing at globals and after this performance it definitely looks like that is highly likely but i do want to pull out some kind of crazy coincidental stats like we heard Taco talk, talk about Murstash also won the last chapter for or the last major or the first major from chapter four but Zago also did that for Asia and then Suns also did that from OCE something about this first major of every year but also on top of that Acorn won the first FNCS finals of the year for March 2021 March 2023 and now February 2023 or 2024 they have just created a dynasty. It's happening. Congratulations to the duo, but where did everybody else land? We went into that, that last game, Booga and Aviv against Peter Bob Poyo. What about Clicks and Epic Whale? Let's take a look at the standings. They will tell us everything that we need to know. As we look up at the top, Ooh. Peter Bob and Poyo do manage to take out Aviv and Booga. And we did see Booga going down a little earlier in that game. So that gave Peterbot and Poyle the opportunity to just walk up and claim that second place. Congratulations to them. Second place, life changing amount of money. And of course, the fact that I feel like this format really kind of favored them and their play style, well deserved. Oh, a hundred percent. Peterbot bringing out all of the snipes, some of them that he was hitting, Bro. sometimes unbelievable. He is so good with that. Booga Kelly, how in the world is he finding himself at the top of leaderboards after years of competing? He is so good, and it is awesome to see Clicks, Clicks fans rise. What a performance, MVP like out of him throughout the day, and Epic Will, of course. What a duo. It was such an incredible two days of competition. I'm so excited that we got to see the caliber that we did. And the start of day two, game number seven, was absolutely wild, and it definitely set the pace for the rest of the day. All of these duos that we see here in the top 10 should be absolutely proud of themselves. In fact, every duo that has made it here into the grand finals, fighting through the qualifiers, going through three days of semifinals, whether it was the upper bracket or lower bracket, they all fought to be here and they deserve that spot. And I'm sure a lot of them are already looking forward to Major 2 and seeing what they can do and change to improve and potentially take on Acorn and Cold once again. Yeah, I think that's what I've got my eyes on, right? It's like, if when we come back in Major number 2, we see kind of how this all unfolded. Well, now we have data, right? Now we know the, the, the areas and the ways in which we can look to improve for Major 2. And with more spots available for Globals then, you know all these duos are about to come out swinging vivid. Yeah, 100%. That's what I love so much about the majors, right? Like you can, you just see these duos, if they decide to stick together or not, right? That's another conversation to have. Just develop as the year goes on and we can directly compare some of their performances. 
But we just got to wrap the conversation back around to Acorn and Cold. I mean, finding consistency, not to mention between every single major. Let's not forget the amount of differences in the metas that we have seen where this duo has been able to come out on top and prove time and time again that they are worthy of so much. I mean, we are just in the Acorn and Cold era. I mean, we just have to yeah. be. It's, I mean, starting the day off in third place, jumping up into first place. They were triple conned at fencing fields. And I think a lot of people are going to be looking towards fencing fields now because I believe the EU duo also came from fencing fields. Ooh. Um, so that might be a POI that people look towards. But regardless of if they were on low ground or high ground, they found success. They had incredible solo clutches. I mean, both duos deserve praise, but Cold especially definitely might be the winning factor of this duo vivid yeah i mean 100 we saw so many times where i mean that big gap that they have between them and second place the amount of times cold was able to solo clutch find a reboot anything like that i mean zeke this duo they place top 25 in every single one of oh these God. games all 12 in grand finals how Man, they were uncontested. They had everything they needed. And even in those situations where they were just on the back foot having to either play solo or even go for these reboots, exactly. they just had a plan, right? And guess what? Getting word, we actually have a member of the winning duo here with us for an interview. So first off, we just have to say a massive congratulations. I cannot believe it. Major number one walking away. Another win, bro. Champions, Acorn, what's going on, man? How does it feel? Tell me what's going through your mind right now. What's good? Hey, man, another day in the office. That's all it is, bro. Come on. Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> Man, talk me Another through day. this Another weekend. Download. So obviously you guys came in to day number two in that top five. It's and then work. whatever it was, man, you guys just turned it on. What was your plan of attack coming into day number two? Uh, I mean, we're con, so like we didn't want to switch up too many things. And like don't we didn't want to over prepare like we've been doing in the past. So we kind of just played <clears throat> we kind of played like a turning at like a cash go. <clears throat> Oh, okay, yeah, just play a grand finals of an FNCS like a cash cow. Okay, yeah. if that doesn't say enough, then I don't know what does. Um, you guys, of course, placed top 25 in every single one of the games that we saw happen this weekend while contested a little bit. How did you guys manage to do that? I mean, storm surge going on, changes to that as well. So many factors. How do you overcome all of that? Um, I don't know, man. You just did it. <laughs> okay. I mean... Acorn, this isn't the first time we're seeing you here. This is, in fact, your your third grand. This is my voice. And it looks like he's just, I mean, <laughs> this is your third time coming in, grabbing a, a victory roar, or grabbing a first place out of the global <clears throat> championships. What is it? How are you able to stay so consistent over all these years now? Um, I mean, I just put in, like, as much time as I can. <laughs> and uh, I always want to be the best, you know? I'm always striving for better. Like, never satisfied. <clears throat> I'm never satisfied. Yeah, so what can you tell me about Cold? Obviously, I have uh, two questions. First question, mm -hmm. if you guys, let's say we started Globals today, right? Do you guys mm -hmm. feel like you're in a place where you could walk away and win Globals? Or do you feel like there's still a couple things that you would want to work on to make sure you will win Globals? No, I think we do win. I think we're primed. Okay, second we question. question. Three Talk cash to me. Gifts. Oh, sorry. We played three cash cups <laughs> and we won all three of them. Now we're going to the FTS Grands, winning FTS Grands, four for four finals, first places. Like, this has never been done before. Like, we're literally fully primed. <laughs> okay, okay. So talk to me about Cold. Where does he kind of fit into the equation? Because you guys, it's like back and forth. There's this like almost beautiful ebb and flow where just you guys are constantly firing on all cylinders. Like, talk to me about like, what what is his piece of this puzzle? I mean like he's just the best like he's always listening to me like he never questions a play like he's on me all the time and he's there to solo clutch when i need him like it's it's perfect dude that's awesome listen man congratulations again we'll let you go so you can just keep up that voice uh really quick before you go where can people find you uh like acorn on all socials acorn fan on twitter i'll be i'll be streaming and making hella content now so Let's nice. go, man. Congratulations again. We'll see you at Global Championships. And of course, we'll see you next major. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
humble guy, right? Hey, listen, yeah, we want three think? cash cups. We want a, a, a <laughs> grand. Not a big deal. Just another day in the office, Viv. Uh, yeah, I think the, the telling thing there for me is, you know, comparing the grand finals of an FNCS to a cash cup. <laughs> I don't even know how you have the confidence to kind of treat games like this, like a cash cup. But hey, shout out to Acorn and Cold. It works for them. Listen, when you're 170 points ahead of second place, you don't have to be humble. You deserve every right to be as confident and as cocky as we just got to see right there. I'm so excited to see what we're going to see from them in Major 2 and obviously the Global Championships as they punch their ticket for that. It's It's been an incredible two days. It's been an incredible four weeks now of having the first Major of Chapter 5. I'm, I'm really excited for the meta. I'm really excited with North America. It really seems like a lot of the competition is starting to kind of catch up with each other. We've had some incredible games and we've had some incredible fights and I can't wait for more. That's right. Well, friends, that wraps up major number one of the FNCS. Thank you so much to all the players, to the fans. All of you make this all possible and it is such a pleasure to just watch awesome Fortnite with all of you. We hope to see you guys for major number two. Of course, don't forget about this outfit, but until major two, as always, we love you. Keep yourselves safe. And we'll see you on that battle bus. Beep, beep. Beep. <laughs> That's my show. Burn up and see the